All right, we're live. We're live. We got them here. We have the team from Spire's End. Thank you, everyone, for coming up and um, and checking out our stream tonight. This is a special Saturday night stream of Vorpal Board because we have a campaign that finished earlier today, extremely successful. If you followed our channel before, you've seen us uh, play this actually a while back before the campaign started. Um, we tonight we're going to be playing a few chapters of Spire's End. And I have a couple of members of the Spires and team with me tonight. I have Greg and Ben. Greg and Ben, thank you for joining me. Of course. And okay. Greg is in California, and Ben is the hero of the stream <laughs> because Ben is still awake, and it's 3 in the morning in Germany. So, Ben, thank you for uh, putting your sleep on the line for us tonight or this no morning. And then this guy, Steve, this is just a, a random creeper who showed up on the stream tonight, actually. <laughs> um, Steve, I was out to dinner, and I was like, that's about right. When we logged in tonight to actually play on Vorpal Board, this guy was already in here, and I don't know who he is. Um, yeah. No, Steve's just a buddy. Talk about your security. Yeah, Steve, Steve's a buddy um, who's followed um, Spire's End from the very beginning and really been in, in conversation with Greg uh, for quite some time about it and actually was the guy who um, told me about it when I first found out about, about the game um, last year. So so Steve's going to hang out and play with us tonight as well. Sorry, Greg? And a little fun fact, Steve was the first reviewer. He was the first, <laughs> really? Yeah, he was the first guy to, to get back to me with a review. And I it, that was another thing. I was, I was blown away because I – it was like the first thing and it was so he had like copious notes just like it was beautifully done with like how many times he played how many people had died i remember i was in the car and i was looking at my wife I was like look at this look at how much time he spent on this i can't do it i was i was so thrilled it was it was a, it was a good moment the benefits of traveling a ton for work you get to sit in hotel rooms and play test games that are really cool looking yeah it, it was awesome i i, I loved it and then and then at the same time, the guy, um, uh, Chad from of Dyson Men, like inside of a half hour, his came in right after that. So it was just like, boom, boom. And, and it was, it was, that's where it started. And then Steve is actually the first backer. Oh, he was, he, really? he, he got one. in, he got the first, he got the oh, first yeah. click, huh? That's pretty good. He was number, he was number one when it happened. So the uh, yeah, campaign yeah. ended, I think, at like noonish today, somewhere around the afternoon. Um, and um, you wanted, I believe, if I'm right here, eighty five hundred dollars. That was your target. Uh, and I want to say, I want to publicly say that I saw this coming a mile away. I knew this was going to happen. I knew the number. I knew it was going to get over seventy five grand. I was like, this is the thing, right? I want everyone to know that I knew it right here. No, I <laughs> Um, I knew this game was going to be, I knew this game was going to be successful for sure. Um, I wonder what Ben thinks, what he thought it was going to get. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, Ben, did you think it was going to get 75,000, Ben? Um, I, I, I didn't think it would be that much, no. I thought we would reach the goal, but I didn't think it would explode. I don't know, like, it was, like, a great job on the marketing from Greg. Like, sending it out to so many people was really well done, really well executed. So I'm happy it worked out. Yeah, it's, uh... I didn't. I did not think I would hit ten. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, I think that was day one at least. Mm -hmm. um, and so, what we're going to do tonight, we're not going to try to spoil too much. If, if if you're here checking out the campaign, or if you're a backer of the campaign, um, we're going to play through some of the chapters. Um, we're going to play it using this system here, Vorpal Board. If you've never seen it before, it's just a platform that I'm a co-founder of, where you can play tabletop games remotely with people. So we're just playing this in a browser. Uh, all four of us, um, and I've scanned in um, all the cards that you'll see here. A lot of times we actually play it on the table, but we're not going to do that tonight because this stuff is so new that it's all still digital. So there isn't a physical copy of all this stuff, uh, and we're going to be playing it that way for you tonight. Um, the way that we're going to do it is Greg and Steve are going to be the good guys, the heroes, and Ben, who is the artist, so if you have any questions about the art for this game, um, Ben is going to be here to answer questions. Uh, I know the art is extremely popular. Um, so if you have questions about uh, Ben and his background or any of the art stuff, definitely throw those into chat. If you have questions about how the game is structured and works, 
Um, obviously, you have the guy who designed the game here as well, and Greg. So, um, so throw those in as well. And um, I think we're going to start by having Steve and Greg choose their characters randomly. So there's six out of the box, <clears throat> and I think there was an additional one coming as a stretch goal. Is that right, Greg? Yeah, I mean, she's done. I just, her mechanics, I just don't, you know. I thought about throwing it in here, but it's really not done. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do with her yet, <laughs> so. Fair, fair enough. So we're going to start with the six, the six to start, um, and they're over here on the left. Uh, and okay, and I got this one. Steve and Greg are going to grab, grab one. Um, okay. All right, and I'm going to move these over here. And then, yeah. let's see. Sure. How about we, we place them to the left and right of the little card station here? Yeah, I'm already on it. Cool. And then um, I will handle bringing in the new cards. Steve, Steve you're, moving, you're moving my stuff around here, Steve. I don't mean to. I'm trying to grab my little, little <laughs> oh, card. Okay. All right, cool. Um, and then the way we're going to start, so the game starts, um, there's some story stuff. There's some um, educational stuff actually in the deck. It's very cool that the deck teaches you how to play. So when you first open up the box for the first time, you're going to be able to flip through a bunch of the cards, and those cards are essentially acting as your tutorial into the game. We're going to skip all that stuff, and we're going to dive right into the first encounter, um, and that's how we're going to and that's how we're going to play today. So I'm going to move move Steve. I'll put Steve down here, and I'll put Greg over here. You need some help with your hit points there, or what? Yeah, I can't get them to drag for some reason. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, we'll drag them over for you. Nice. Yeah. We're gonna do this for you. They're on the wrong side. This is not like. Oh this. yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks. I like. Greg. I like structure. I appreciate it. All right. Yeah. What, what am I doing wrong? Um. Well, yeah. Actually, you know what? They're not working for me now. You. Hmm. Yeah, I think like those ones you killed. I can't. I can't access those ones. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you need yeah. to make copies, you can just make copies of them. Okay, so let's. And then I will. Um, I'll take a look at this first card. So any of the cards that we've brought in, like I mentioned, these are these are currently digital. Um, and uh, one thing I will say is that everything you'll see tonight um, is is in progress. So nothing here is necessarily totally final. Um, thank you, Jaw Twenty, for the follow. Um, nothing here is is necessarily totally final. Um, I think Greg would probably say that most of it is is pretty close to what it would look like coming out of the box, but uh, but everything is still still in progress. So the um, his armor, I can't do anything with that one. With that one right there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll just forget gonna... it, forget about that one. Yeah, I'm gonna just kind of. Right. Steve, can you touch your? Can you touch them? These. So ones? I only see I see six red and three yep. black. Okay. So we're good. I don't see the ones that were we were trying to pull over. The before. weird ones. Okay, cool. Yeah, so, we'll see what happens. All right. So, good. so okay, cool. So, so we're going to start with the doorman. And the way, um, the way the game works is uh, you, you have a big deck of cards and you're flipping them over one at a time. And then every single card will either have like some story elements on it or maybe a, a monster that you need to fight or, um, or a choice you need to make uh, or kind of like almost like a skill test you need to do. Uh, and this one, um, as you can see, is essentially like some story flavor text. We're rolling up to the door of the spire, and um, and the first thing, the first person that we run into here is the doorman, and um, and uh, we're told that that we're dealing with underdwellers here. So the underdwellers are in the spire, and um, and we're going to go to battle. And so this is the first card, uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the next one. So we're going to bring in uh, card number four. And the game can tell you, you know, move to a next card, or sometimes it moves you halfway through the deck, or it jumps you around a little bit. Um, but right now, we're just supposed to bring in card number four. And I'm going to bring that into the game session. We'll flip that one over. And this is a good example of one of the cards that kind of shows you how the game works. So it gives you some setup instructions. Uh, and you can see that we've set up the game essentially this way uh, with the doorman and then uh, our two heroes. So I will bring in card five, which is the doorman that we're going to be fighting. Actually, I'm not going to be fighting anybody. You guys are going to be fighting. All right, cool. So this is the doorman. Um, and uh, obviously, it's got the art from, from Ben on it. And then the general structure of the game is kind of a dice rolling, um, uh, almost kind of like a little bit of a gambling game, because you're gambling your health to see and get better attacks. <clears throat> and uh, I'll get his health and armor ready. And you guys can start talking about what you might want to do. All right. Well, since 
I'm on the left hand side. I think I should go first. Yeah, sure. sure. That sounds good. Um, I'm gonna. Well, I think, you know, I think I'm gonna go a little lighter this time. <laughs> you're not and, gonna. You're not gonna push it like the last time we played, where we went really crazy. <laughs> I think I was gonna try something different. You know, I, I always just start. You know, start with everything. So I'll just do. I'll just do a silk strike. So I will. Uh, I will pay my two and I will roll and I got a three. So, so that was not a good way to start. Um, all right. That's that. All right. So I'm going to roll for my recoup. I, I, I missed to anyone who uh, is wondering and I got a one. So that's exactly, <laughs> it's the worst possible start you can have. Very cool. Uh, and as you guys are playing, I'm kind of zooming in. So folks that are watching can see, you know, can take a look at the actual cards on the card you can see what actions you're able to take and then this number here is how much health you have to spend to take those actions so greg did a silk strike uh rolled uh rolled rolled bad and then uh so he didn't do any damage and then when he went to recoup which you do after your actions he rolled bad again so he didn't get any good stuff yeah houdini seven uh we're gonna change out the digital dice i'll run away real quick i will uh type yeah. up type up some updates uh and yeah. release a new version of the software <laughs> Tough, tough crowd like the first roll <laughs> yeah yeah exactly brief. all right steve what are you all gonna right. do so let's go with um how about swift straps so we'll... yeah, yeah you gotta at least do a three all right. yeah, we'll move these out of the way are they moving yeah they're moving everything's yep. good when they're i not, zoom... they're not moving on my end well i see them move yeah yeah they everything's everything's cool Okay. I got two, three. All right. So now we roll. Ugh. Ugh. Wow. Ugh. We're going to die. We're not off to a good start. All right. So recoup. No damage. Yep. A recoup of four gets you a one. Yes. All right. All right. Now, now watch how the... All right. Okay. So now the way the enemies work is they don't, they don't, we need to have a little bit of AI in this thing because they don't get to make, uh, you know, you don't have a player, an active player um, rolling uh, the way, that, or choosing the way that you do with your heroes. So uh, you can see on, the, on their actions, there's one through six at the bottom there. And uh, the way that works is there's a little deck and I'm going to flip over the action. And this guy is doing action number two. So if you look at the card, that's a stab. And then Ben is going to roll the dice for action number two. And we're going to see what, what happens. Oh, my gosh. That's a seven. That's how you roll. That's right. That's how you, right. you bring it from Germany right there. Um, all right. So, all right, so he's going to do um, he uh, needs two damage. Hits. Oh, yeah, that's right. I apologize. So the first roll is to decide who he's attacking. So a seven. Which How are you guys going to do it? One, two, three, four, you, Greg. Five, six, seven, eight to, to Steve. Yep. Yeah, yeah. All right, so he's attacking Steve, and then he's going to roll again. Okay, yeah. All right. There you go. So a six, which does two damage to Steve. It's armor, armor. Armor. Armor, right? Yep, yep. Come on. <laughs> I can't get this to work tonight. Yeah, the... um. No, oh, maybe not. Yeah, got one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll move this one. There you go. It's not, for some reason, it's not. I wonder if it's. Hold on, let me get my mouth. Yeah, Steve. Steve was breaking into the celebration cask earlier, yeah. and he can't. I wish. <laughs> the, um, so you you have three and one, right? Is that where we're at? So I should, yeah, I should have three and one. This is this is not a good scene. Yeah, yeah, you guys yeah. are in trouble right out oh, of the gate. Right, right. The, the 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 squishy, easy first guy. All yeah. Right. Yep. All right. So um. Okay, fine. So, uh, Ben, can you roll? Oh, actually, no. We don't need to do anything. It's my turn. Yeah, it's Millicent's turn. This is this is already really bad. Um, <laughs> okay, I guess I'm gonna. I would say I'm gonna rest, but I'm not. I'm just gonna do one. It's and we're needle gonna dart two. Yeah, yeah, needle dart two. We're gonna do a one. Wow, wow. It's <laughs> <laughs> really tough. Okay, so I'll roll for my recoup. I'll get a six. Okay, fine. So I'll pull one back. I'm resting next turn. Okay, All right. Steve. Steve. All right, we're going to try this again. Let's do the same thing. See if we can't get... 
doing the swift straps again. Doing the swift straps again. Okay. Again. again. Get one more out of there, right? Yep. All right, here we go. I'm gonna roll a one. A Ooh, four. four. Okay. Something. So one that... bloody damage. Oy. So wait, we... I thought I thought you did three no. damage off that. We did three damage. Wait, what? He did swift did straps. Swift strap. Oh, 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 sorry. You so think it three was... damage in a what is that? What is the? I can't see the symbol. So I think that uh, that brings back one shield, right, Craig? You got to kick back one shield. Yep. Okay. Cool. All right. All right so I'll, I'll move. Three, I'll remove these three. Oh no, he, he takes his armor off first. Sorry, I always forget that. Every time I play this game, I forget armor. So a little fun thing. So might as well fill this with little trivia of the game, right? Oh yeah, of course. So the Dorman was more or less based on the um, the doctor from Planet of the Apes, the original Planet of the Apes. Okay, yeah, Dr. Zayas, right? Yeah, Dr. Zayas. So if you look at his robes, they're kind of like his robes. Interesting. And so is that of... so is that something that you told Ben? Yeah. That's cool. That's that is that's very cool. I always wonder about how. That process goes for you guys. Like, how? What kind of notes do you supply to him as part He's of that? Supposed to be like a combination of yeah, you know, Dr. Zayas, a slee stack from Land of the Lost. Okay. And um, uh, what's the other one? Now I don't even remember now. An angler fish or whatever those things are. Oh yeah, there's the angler fish thing. But um, and then the symbols for the whole game were the, the you know on the Planet of the Apes they had that that kind of ruin. Um, mm -hmm. And I kind of took that, and then I made a new version of that, and made it kind of, kind of work. But I wanted to kind of echo that, that kind of stuff. Very so, cool. so I was trying to kind of get those things in there, and then I'm like a little bit of the time machine, the 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 dudes and the subterranean guys in the time machine, that old. Uh, oh yeah, what are they called? A, 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 a dollar to anyone who can pull that Morlocks. Yeah, Morlock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I think yes. that's it. Yeah, yeah. a dollar. So, I pay. I owe myself a dollar. Uh, okay, cool. So um, you guys did again no damage to uh, to this None. beast's health. So Ben, uh, let's see what you're gonna do. Okay, you're gonna be attacking Greg with attack number six, which it's is the good. the key burst. Oh, what it misses! What it misses! Oh. Right, it's a little break. And then he doesn't need to recoup because he hasn't had any damage uh, taken yet. No. Okay, so I'm going to rest this turn and just recoup. Um, and then next time I'm going to give him give him the business. Oh, nice. Right, so, so we'll do this and then that. Okay, cool. I'm all ready to go. Next turn I'm going to hit. All right, Steve, what are you up to? I'm going to rest. I'm back. Well, you and got four. Don't you have four or you have three? I had three. Oh, okay. And I'm gonna roll for my recoup and five, so that's what another two? No yep. one. Well, you get one extra because you you yeah. were resting, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Now, if we just don't get hit, we're good. We should be good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm still I don't see them. Huh. User error. Okay. All right. So let's see what um let's see what he's gonna do to you guys. Attack number two again. So that's pretty lucky. Just a stab. He's attacking Steve. Coming after me. Let's see what he does. That another <laughs> eight. Oh, an eight with a on a two. Yeah, so it's two damage, ah, and then it's, he's going to apply bleed. Yeah. So both my shields are gone, right? Yeah. yeah. And then I'm going to put this uh, this little gold here is going to indicate bleed yep. for you there. We're fine. We're fine. All right. This is where this is where things go down. All right, so I am going to do everything. Oh, man, what are you spending? You're spending four? Yeah, Silk Barrage, here we go. All right. I can't I can't lose unless I, I roll. <laughs> yeah. See, six, there we go. Six damage. All right. So that's good. That's good. So I, I think for, for folks who are watching, this is where Greg even almost used the language of, of kind of like a gambling <laughs> uh, thing, right? Because you are gambling yeah. with your health uh, right. here in this game, and you always look at those large attacks down at the bottom, and you think to yourself, oh, man, this really, you know, this really is uh, extension right. nine. Yeah, I didn't get Thanks my... Thanks for, uh, for the sub. 
So, um, yeah. So, you know, the part of the game is supposed to be kind of like crap stable yep. where you, you know, you're kind of, kind of doing that stuff. So, yeah, all this, right, cool. This is uh this is one last roll right here. We're going to pull it off. I swear. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, Steve, what are you up to? We're doing three. We're going for that, that first one we did. What was it? The, uh, the swift straps again. Swift straps again. See if I can get these little markers to move. There, there you we go. go. Oh, seven. Nice. All right. I'll take it. So that's four. Four, and you get a kickback of armor. Two. So he loses four health. You almost got him. One health left. <clears throat> I want to ask Ben, is, are, you, are you tired of drawing keys? <laughs> and <laughs> I, I find it funny that we are not even talking about the keys anymore. Just add them by default. Like for, for the couple of last cards, we didn't have any talk and, about keys. I know. I know. You just, you just put them on there. I, from, <laughs> yeah, just throw them wherever I see them. From, from the get go, I, I I was telling him that for fun and because you're trying to collect keys during the game, I wanted all the allies to have a key hidden on their person. So everybody has got a key, you know, oh. on there somewhere. Some of them are, you know, you can see really well, and then like on all the bad guys, they all have one too. Obviously, the Dormans a little different. Um, the idea was that he has all these keys, and then when he gets in trouble here that he disperses them throughout the spire. Like he gets rid of them real quick because he doesn't want these guys to take the keys from him. So he, he you know, he does his little his little magic stuff and he, he gets rid of them. That was, the, that was the deal. And then you're trying to find them throughout the game. All right, so let's do it. I think you rolled a three, right, Ben? Right, that was me. Oh, that was Steve, okay. Yeah. So, uh, so let's see what the Dorman's gonna do. He's going to attack with four. So that's a swipe. And he's attacking Steve again. Let's see what he's going to do. A two. He misses. Oh, no. All right. All right. Then you get to re roll your recoup there, Ben, to see if you get any health back. All right. He does. He gets one health back. That's not going to be enough. No, I don't I don't think you're going to live yeah. through this turn, man. Dude, I've, I've, I can't do a whole lot. <laughs> Ooh. I'm just gonna have to do it. I don't know what to do. Do a actually. zero, maybe? It's just it, that attack sucks. <laughs> um, you overextended last round, Greg. No, but it was worth it. All right, so Steve, what do you do? You have any? What do you have? Well, I don't have anything left. I've got two shields. Like, I don't. I have to re. In fact, so am I wait, dead? No, wait. You have two shields. It, that means I'm, you're dead. I'm dead, right? Yeah, you're dead. So wait, you ran completely out of health. I think I did. <laughs> you, who's watching? Well, who's you watching, know, Steve? Who's watching, Steve over around. here? I, somebody needs to pay attention to me. Come on. I, I, I was oh, worried about this. Is you died. Place. I did. Did you? Did you kill yourself, or did he kill you? He killed me. He killed you. Okay. All right. All right. So, so you so got death. All right. So, so let's talk about death, right? All let's right, get yes. let's get deep on the stream tonight. Uh, and right. Talk about so, death. So he has a death move. So. Um, if we had known that he had died, right, which, right, because be nice. so we have the zombie ferret to do, which will give you an additional um, one attack on a target. So you get a roll again, and you do the spike sling, and potentially we could just kill him. Yep. If you roll a uh, if you roll a six, seven, or eight, Steve, you got him. Four one, <laughs> four one, four one. Because, <laughs> the zombie uh, ferret actually just curled up into a ball and rolled off into the sunset. Everybody, everybody dies. <laughs> everybody. Dies. All right. know, I've been I've been worried for a really long time that the dormant was just too easy. Like we <laughs> we proved it wrong tonight, and we just we just wipe him out. So I actually feel pretty good about this. I'm um, glad that my demise could make you feel better. Yeah, because on, uh, my my whole reasoning was it should be a 50-50 chance on every boss that you lose one guy. So this it works well because the last time we didn't lose any and this time we're going to lose one. Yeah. So yep. That's Okay, so I'll I'll get your health pool ready. Steve, I think there's yeah. some you have some um Yeah, I don't know what I'm, am I should I use a different browser? I don't like, know. Maybe? Some some bug on your end is is freezing the uh, the cubes. All right. I'm not going to touch my cubes. How's okay, that? that's fine. I, I can run your I can run your cubes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, your your area is a mess. Yeah, it, it really is, is. It is a mess. Right, so the the designer in me is losing my mind right now. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm a little. I I get it. I get it. 
All right, we're gonna we're gonna audible real quick, guys. We're gonna move. We're gonna move Steve to the left. I mean, it looks like you. I, I don't know what it looks like. All right, every, every, everybody, just hold up. I'm just gonna move some stuff over. We're gonna get Steve's Steve's shame off the screen. Thank you. <laughs> the best thing is I can't see my shame, so it's fine. Yeah, uh, there's there's something I either see, like uh, wonky. It's a likely excuse. Uh, yeah, there's some, go, there's some go. some sort of uh, some sort of issue with um, with Steve's with Steve's browser or something that that is uh, freezing freezing stuff so apologies to folks at home but but we're gonna audible a little bit yeah, yeah we, we're, we're getting an lol in chat yep yeah yep. i mean they can definitely call it the problem between the chair and the computer i'm fine with that <laughs> uh okay so we got all right we're almost there and i think we're i think we're good so steve i'm gonna get you i'm gonna get you set up real quick here okay? i appreciate it hey no problem man i remember the first i mean we might as well fill the space right yeah this will be on whatever in YouTube forever. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. So just, uh, you know, just watch out with the stories here, Greg. <laughs> they're going to, they're going to crack open a beer on a Friday night and just click on this. <laughs> <laughs> Let the good times flow. And, um, yeah, it was funny when we first did this, I remember I, I sent Ben like, I was like, Oh, I need like pillars or something behind. And I took like Roman columns and I sent him a picture of that. And, and I remember I was like, and I said, and he drew exactly the Roman column, like the exact same thing. And I was just like, oh, just do something like this. And he came out, it was like the exact thing. And I was like, huh. I was like, I, and then I remember, I remember, I remember like emailing him back. And this is like, I didn't know him that well. And I was like, you know, you, you just drew the exact same thing. And he's like, well, that's the picture you gave me. <laughs> and I just remembered, and I was like, could you like, and so anyhow, I don't think he was very happy, but I made him like change the tops and there was like the little Roman frilly things on there. We're getting to see so, how the sausage, the, the, the creative sausage is made, yeah, today, yeah. which is good. Um, well, Greg, this was your first game, right? Yeah, this is my first anything, yeah. Ben, ben, is this your first time illustrate or doing the artwork for a board game? Oh, for a board game, yeah. And also in this style, like usually I do like uh, illustrative stuff, like okay. full color and stuff like that. Um, so this is the first time just going full black and white and accent color. The artwork, I mean, it's amazing. The artwork and the graphic design. When Greg sent it to me the first time, I was like floored. I got, I got, I got geeked out and ran to Staples because I ran out of ink to print out the uh, <laughs> the printing play. I was, my wife walked me and was like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "You've got to see this. This is amazing." Yeah, look, I I, I have mine right here. There it is, printed on uh, on, nice. on on a bunch of cardstock at uh, at Kinko's, I think. Yeah. So they were mine's probably they were probably like, "What the hell is this guy printing out at Kinko's?" <laughs> mine's sitting in a box in Tampa right now. Uh, okay, so we got a, we got a, we got up oh, first rules. We got a rules, uh, a rules check from chat, which, which is always good because I screw up the rules constantly on these streams. Um, I thought he had five hit points, a rest and successful recoup one from three hit points, and he did a three hit point attack, so he should have had two hit points remaining. And the last attack by the boss didn't do any damage since the boss missed, so he shouldn't have died. I guess it doesn't matter now, but it's fine. Yeah, you know, I, I actually thought he was okay too, um, John. <laughs> I think what we're going to just say is Steve's a mess <laughs> <laughs> and that had we, had we had the time to really look at it the way you did, we would have seen that. Yeah. Yeah. He did, but, but, but uh, Houdini seven did have, does have a point. He did have bleed on as well. Yeah. So, which, which would have killed me anyway. Right. Yeah. yeah super dead and yeah the ferret got squashed the ferret rolled off and is gonna is maybe gonna attack us later on because it was so upset by how badly we played it earlier yeah very sad but um and at the end of all of this the doorman is still alive yes that's true. let's just not forget that the, the <laughs> fluff character as you called it i think we're having fun yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, wait, and 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 just so you guys know, I did. I have everything resituated, so we're cool. Everyone on stream now should not see all of the frozen the frozen cubes, um, which we uh, we're gonna get fixed right away. Steve, I'm gonna have to get you into some sort of hyperbaric test chamber to show me right. how you did that, and then yeah. and then we'll we'll correct it. All right. Everyone's having fun except for Ben because it's three forty seven a. <laughs> I, dude, I'm having a lot of fun. I'm wondering why this is not like a three-player co-op game. Like I like, like playing this boss. 
You you like or you don't like what? I I do like I do like oh, playing okay, cool. this. Cool. I actually do think it's kind of cool to have a variant that. I mean, essentially, you can always just have a third-person roll the dice for the boss, right? So, so yeah, you I, I, I never, I, I didn't know if I could, like, technically say it was a three-person thing, you know? I kind of felt like I was lying if I did that, because you don't get to make a lot of choices. Yeah, but. I guess that's true, yeah. Um, okay, so so are we on to, we're on to the Dorman now, right? Yeah. It's okay, so wait, do we, uh, it's been so long, I don't even know where we're at. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's Dorman next where are we at? Whose turn? Is oh it? no, it's 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 back to Millicent because we had we had Steve roll for the ferret. Okay. Right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Real quick. So I'm just I'm gonna rest. Okay. And I'm gonna roll. I got a five, so I'm gonna get two back. Two health back. Yeah. Great. Okay. Cool. All right, Let's Steve. So Steve's got a new character. Steve's playing as um, Sedney. Is that how you pronounce it, Greg? I, I always ask because I'm self conscious yeah. about it. Yeah, Sydney. Sydney. All right. So yeah, sure. you you should just be able to blast this guy, right? Yeah, I'm going to do a mini cannon. So I'm not going to touch my cubes. Okay. So you're doing Wait, two. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, you're doing a mini cannon. Yeah. Right. Two. That's, that's a bad choice. We always <laughs> do. I mean, we need to do two damage, right? Yeah, but you. Oh, all right. All right. Well, what do you think? No, no, no. You're right. You're right. It's threes. Three is the. Okay. Good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. If if, if me. If it was my character doing a, a, a two attack would be bad because it's a four and higher, but yours is three. So, right. okay, good. All right, so here we go. We're rolling. An eight. All we right. Kill one. All right, good. So, so we get to click on this guy, and finally, I get to hit the trash can, and we're put, <laughs> we're putting the doorman in the trash. Get out of here. Be good. Uh, all good. right, so I'm going to trash the rest of these cards too. All right, so, um, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have deleted it so quick. I think the next card was card six. All right, so let's bring in card six. All right, all right your we... first victory. Congratulations to the allies. Um, all right, so we increase the ally armor thresholds by one. This is how, as you're going through the spire, um, your characters get uh, sort of a, a bonus. They get stronger as they go. So their health thresholds can go up and their armor thresholds can go up. So this is essentially kind of like leveling up. Um, so you're gonna get an ally armor threshold increase. And then um, we pulled the card 32, which I think this is card 32, right? Yeah. So this is your little. So this is your that. your character tracking board, essentially. The whole antiquities thing is going to go away. Oh, okay, cool. So then this goes to plus one, yeah. right? Yeah. And right. and only will level up five times. So this was um this whole thing has to be reworked. Oh, okay. But anyway, yeah. Okay. All right, sweet. So let's take a look at uh, what happens next. The creature is bleeding on the floor, facing you. He shifts a bit, still alive. So you get a choice here. Do you want to finish him off and take everything? He's got a bunch of keys. He's, he's laying there bleeding, guys. You can finish him off. You can leave him. And let's take what he has and move on. So don't kill him, but to take all his stuff, which is, I don't know, I think that's the coward's path. Uh, or you could take him captive. Heroes decide. And Greg knows what happens on all these cards, so maybe he shouldn't weigh in. <laughs> I don't, it's hard to remember which way to go. You know? Why don't we just... Is there anyone in chat who can? Chat yeah, chat. What do you think? Do you want to kill this guy, leave him, or bring him with? Let's see what let's see what all the good folks in chat think that you guys should do. Captive. Captive. I I, I don't understand that choice. Well, maybe he'll help you out. You know, maybe he'll do something. Oh, double captive. Yeah. Kill, kill, kill. That only counts as one vote. <laughs> I'm, for, I'm for murder. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So yeah, so so far we have so far we have a double captive, which which I let's do it. I don't know that we've ever kept him captive before. You haven't? I don't remember. Okay, I guess we do captive. All right, see what happens. Wait, All do right. I get to roll a recoup? Uh, yeah. Well, no, it doesn't matter because we you, you health up in between. Oh, we health back up. That's right. Yeah. All right. Okay, so this... the, so we're gonna take him captive. Uh, mm -hmm. There was one late, late coming vote, but it was too late. The polls had already closed, and and the the the, who, the um, let's see who was it? It was uh, Sugar Lips eighty nine, and which is a great, which is a great name, and uh, and Houdini uh, seven. So we we pull card nine, and then we we're gonna see uh, see what happens. All right, here we are on card nine. You take action and lop off his hands, which is a gross way to take anybody captive. And the creature drops to his knees. You pull him up by the wrist. His blood's... Oh, now we got to roll a d8. 
So who wants to do the honors? Let's go for it. Ben, you want to roll? Uh, sure. Eight. Eight. Uh, leave him. I doubt he'll be any use. The small creature you met earlier is at your side. You met a little creature right before you came into the spire. He places a small pouch beneath the underdweller's wrist, draining some blood into it. He then tosses the pouch to you. So you got the bag of blood. Taking it. Congratulations. How do I put it underneath my card? It should, uh, whichever one you select should sit on top. And it's, uh, we're off to it. There we go. We'll just have it a little, a little bit offset. There we go. So so the way that this works when you're playing in the game is you slide the card just a little bit underneath, and that card that we just drew acts, it hangs out the bottom, and that's how you do uh, gear. So you can see this bag of blood is now owned by Millicent, and it can only be used once per encounter, and uh, it costs two health, and then it applies luck three. So that's the <clears> bag of blood. So congratulations. You got a gross, a gross bag of blood. It comes in handy. Yeah, that luck is nice. All right, so then we uh, re reveal card 13. So let's see how our uh, heroes are going to move forwards here. Okay. All right, so sunshine. Sunbeams punch through dusty air onto the back wall. The light blazes a hot orange in between two corridors. There are signs of a struggle. A dead underdweller is lying face down in front of you with some overturned furniture. Glowing red blood trails along the floor haphazardly toward the left. All right, so I'm not going to read all of it because I just hate listening to my voice reading constantly, but we get a choice. We can follow a creepy, weird, thin creature into the corridor to the left or avoid that creepy creature and go into the corridor to the right. So let's see. Ben. Check. Yeah, Ben. How about Ben, ben makes a choice this time? Yeah, Ben, you make a choice. Well, I, I know what I know the outcome, so let Chet do it. <laughs> you do know the outcomes? I think I do because I kind of was part of making the game. <laughs> oh, really? That's interesting. I, you know, it's funny because I never knew if you actually read them or not. <laughs> I mean, you sent me like the, the large PDF with all the notes and all the stuff in there. I yeah. looked through that, yeah. So you actually read it. I'm touched. This is not... <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Greg, Greg just assumed that Ben hated him. He was across the he was across the globe, just like pissed off all the time. I know. Like, the guy is sending me more stuff. Um, okay, so yeah, let's have uh, yeah someone in chat. Go ahead. All go right, ahead. first first one in chat. The first one to type it in. Where are we going? Left. All right. Houdini seven says we're going to the left. Um, all right. So reveal card fourteen. All right. I don't know, man. I, I don't I don't know if I like that decision. All right. Reflections. You've, you entered a room with a ton of mirrors here. The left corridor reveals a small circular room with rows of benches facing three narrow, tall mirrors. As you enter, an underdweller is passing through the center mirror as if it were a wall of water. The surface ripples as his body slides through. Um, okay, so... This is one of my favorite... Uh, this is one of my favorite cards in terms of how, Greg, you wrote this, where... It's not even really uh, a cho like a like a choice you're making. It's just like you asking the heroes to kind of like have a reaction, like something lurks? Yeah. Question mark. Uh, so then the heroes get to say, "I think I hear something," or "Nah, it's nothing." Um, and so we'll uh, we'll play we'll play by the same rules. The first first response in chat is going to win all the time. Do you think you heard something, or "Nah, it's nothing"? It's nothing, says Jaw nothing. Twenty. All right. There we go. All right. So it's nothing now. Now note here he is on the other side uh if you re if you can read backwards you know just maybe think about that no, that's nothing all right like, I, I have i have notes for ben on that one <laughs> <laughs> just just what ben wants to hear just what ben wants to hear like oh i gotta make some changes well, soon. we the, the people have spoken they want to see the, the mirror man yeah all right so the twins two giant pillars mark the entrance to the next corridor Obsidian tile stretches in every direction. It's dark, unsettling, and uncomfortably warm. As you cross the chamber floor, two dark forms appear from either side. They slide towards you with supernatural speed as if pushed by a sudden and violent wind. They attack in unison. All right, we got to roll a D8. Steve? All right, here we go. Five. Five. The mass figure on the left makes the first move. Three swift punches strobe your chest punishment an ally suffers two damage before the start of the encounter so we need i'll, I'll roll we need to find out who 
this is one of those things where the, a lot of people get confused on this. And what it says in the rules that I may need to kind of reinforce somewhere else is that anytime it just says an ally, something happens to someone, it's determined by a role. So, you know, throughout the whole game, I'll say, you know, just an ally loses armor or an ally loses it. So you're just supposed to roll and it's three, so it's me this time because I'm one through four. Yep. So, yeah, so my character will lose two. And I like that. I think I think thematically, I don't know if you're going for this, Greg, or not. I'm just going to I'm just going to apply this to your brain space. Uh, but thematically, I think that makes sense, right? Because this game is punishing. And mm -hmm. a lot of it is is, you know, based on you gambling kind of uh, sure. and rolling dice. So. It, I think it would go against the theme if you got to make the decision as to where well, sure. that health went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like sometimes, yeah. Like I used to do that on uh, on Kingdom Death. Like there's points where you know something will happen. I would choose. I would say, oh, that guy's got less, so I'll just go. <laughs> I didn't really make him take it. Yeah, but, that's uh, that's not you know that's probably not a get. That's not that's not allowed. That's that's quite an admission that you're going to make on the stream tonight, uh, Greg. Uh, <laughs> your official cred your cred is going down by the second here all right um okay so similar to the doorman we have a setup card for the twins um and the twins have something cool this is something that i was always really impressed with um with greg's kind of design of this game in that the bosses and the encounters that you run into have weird wrinkles to them so it's not just hey this is another character and here's his list of attacks and here's his health and here's his armor there's weird gameplay stuff that might be different uh, character by character. And, and, and when you fight the twins, uh, what we're looking for is if we ever get a five and a five or a six and a six for their actions back to back. And if that occurs, something crazy happens. And so the cool part about that, in my experience, I haven't played through the game a ton of times, but I played through it enough to have fought the twins a bunch, is that it, it, sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. And so your experience with the game is very different um, and, and, and it feels special when it occurs. Like, oh man, finally we're going to see what happens mm -hmm. when the 6-6 six, six occurs. And, and as long as you are able to resist flipping through all the cards and reading them all, which I would really recommend resisting if you're a backer of this game when you get it in your hands, um, you won't know what's going to occur. You know, don't be that type of person. I guess if you want to, do it. I'm, I'm not the boss, but... Well, it states, it states in the rules that if you do it, you will go mad. <laughs> That's what it yeah. You break the space continuum, and yep. you will lose your mind. Yeah. So you you can't look at any card you you aren't specifically told to look at. So yeah, don't be that person who like when they were in sixth grade was getting the choose your own adventure books and then just like flipping through and finding you know how, the path you know working their way backwards. That's that's not the cool way to do it. No, I want to say something really awesome about these guys. This, this is my favorite illustration of the entire game. I, I love this. I love these guys. They're, they're they're fantastic. But when I got them, if you notice, their little um, angler antennas, they're 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 wrapped up. They're wrapped up, and they have like little cloth on them. And when he sent it to me the first time, I remember I was like, I was like, I don't understand why they're not they're not glowing like the other guy. You know, like can you change it so they're glowing? And you know, Ben, what was your what was your answer? Um. I, I, I don't know what my direct answer was, but I remember my reasoning was like, okay, they're like ninjas and they have like these ninja swords, so they wouldn't have glowing antennas, it would hide them, so they can like hide in the dark. It was kind of what I was going for. Isn't that freaking awesome? I love it. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Cool. Yep. I was hoping then, I was hoping the answer Ben was gonna be like, I I I don't know how to draw glowing stuff, Greg. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, he had, a, he had a whole like idea behind it. I was like, that is so cool. So I was like, you know what? Say no more. They don't need to glow. I was like, that's amazing. So it's little things like that that I love to hear about, though, because you don't you don't pick up on it necessarily if you, you know, you don't you don't know, right? No, no, it's no one. Does. Fun that's little my... little tidbit that I think is really cool. Yeah, it's so cool. That's why I bring that stuff up because it's like no one would ever know. And, and you know, if someone watches this later or something and they see that and they wonder, I mean, because I wondered, you know, I just didn't know. I just, you know, I just get this stuff back. And I'm looking at it. And I'm like, oh, man, you know, or, you know, anyhow, it's just a fun thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> lots of love for for the art in chat, um, Ben. So. So, yeah, like we're like we're going to just keep. We're going to keep piling on the praise for you, Ben. I apologize. Uh, but um, I do think it's very neat to hear. Steve, I agree with you. Just like 
I, I feel like it would be hard to to send instructions to an artist and just sort of say like try to do this it's in my brain get it right mm. you know what i mean <laughs> and then sort of wait to see it back and just sort of see what is it is it what I want? And then as as a creator, then trying to tell an artist like, no, it's not it's not what I want. And sort of I don't know, that seems like it could be a process that goes very bad or very well. And from your guys interactions, it seems like it went really well, uh, in my opinion. And obviously, mm -hmm. I think that the product on the on the card speaks for itself in terms of the quality of it. So. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with you, Steve. It's just really interesting to hear these guys talk to each other. So on the flip side of that, Greg, did you get any ideas whenever you saw the artwork that kind of took your, took it in a little bit of a different direction? Like, wow, that's really cool. I think I could do this now. It kind of sparked your creative process. I, oh, I'm sure it did. I mean, like the um, Sydney character with the cannon thing. Yeah. I mean, like what he came up with, with that was incredible because that was not what I had in my mind. And I remember we were talking about it. When I say talking, we're, you know, on Skype or whatever. But um, I had this whole thing, you know, it's like, you know, and, and with the cannon and the, and the shield. And I just knew I wanted her to have an arm cannon. And, you know, I, I don't think of the things that I'm sure incredibly frustrate him, which is how the hell do you put an arm cannon on somebody and make it fit on this goddamn card? <laughs> well... Because I remember he came back to me. He's like, how am I going to put a freaking cannon on her arm and, and get it in the card? And I was like, I want it pointing. You know, I want it pointing straight out. You know, like she's shooting somebody. And he's just like, no. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. And so, you know, that was one of those things where he kind of developed it and did a much better job. Like, you know, I don't know. That doesn't really, that, that kind of equates to what you were saying. But it was just so cool. It looks like she just did a recoil, you know off of that thing it's yeah yeah, yeah well, you know. the first time i saw sedney it was like um the first thing that jumped in my head was like a, a fantasy version of samus from metroid you know what that's ex that that's you know what? good that's good you know, that's just, exactly just like you know like it just took her helmet off you know looking badass got the shield you know what i'm never gonna see anything else now yes all right <laughs> i see <laughs> I, and I just I want I want to throw out just so everyone knows, that's a bunny in the background of Greg's video. That is oh. it. That isn't like a like a like a woodchuck that got into his house or something. That's that's a bunny that lives there. So you don't have to yeah, worry. I have I have free range bunnies. <laughs> they just kind of come and go. It's a kooky and coconut. Yeah. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah. All right. So so yeah, I just wanted to give a shout out to the bunnies. Um, okay, so we got ourselves um, we got ourselves a battle here, guys. Yeah. So we're going to be dealing with the twins. Uh, the twins need ten health. I'll get I'll get their health set up. You guys are back, all set up. Is that right? Uh, I think I need to get oh, two yeah. more. I'm not trying to touch it though. Okay. That went bad last time. Yeah, no, ben, I mean, Ben, I, I know it's like you know it's an ungodly time out there, and we're really kind of taking our time with this. So you know, no, it's it's nope. it's fine. Don't don't feel bad if you want to bail. <laughs> no, it's good. I'm having fun. Okay, cool. <clears throat> and 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 I also like like the talk about the artworks because it's also the way I remember it with like the, the antenna thing and with like the cannon and oh have like a horizontal composition but fit it on a vertical card and I'm like yeah how's that gonna work out? <laughs> like gotta you know adjust it. So. It's it's funny too because I had all these images that I was going to send you and I and you know what I had in my mind was that image from the movie Three Hundred, where mm -hmm. I don't know, it was one of the famous images where it's the one dude he's like on the cliff and he's holding the shield and there's just all you see is his head popping up and there's like sparks and stuff like that so it was kind of like this thing I had in my mind and I was gonna send it to you and then at the last minute I like got rid of the pictures. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to see what he does instead. You know, like sometimes I do really, really, really specific things. And then other times I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'll just see what happens instead. So this ended up way better because the thing I had in mind, all you would have seen was her head and the big yeah. shield. Yeah. So. <clears throat> all right. We got a yeah, question. I, I, uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Ben. No, no. I, I, I almost tried that out with just covering her up because you kind of sent me like a scribble of the character being like completely like behind the shield. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Kind of, 
went for this like you know i just shot and i'm blowing the smoke off of my gun cowboy moment a little bit like that and the way i try to bring in the feeling of hey she's hiding behind the shield and shooting is like these two peculiar like dents in her shield where like one she slots the cannon in and the other she slots her arm in so she can like kind of like hide behind her shield and have like her fists and her cannon stick out and just shoot while also being protected by the shield it's kind of how i try to that is a cool that that's a cool like detail that. i never in a million yeah. years would i have thought of that but like that, <laughs> the idea of kind of like she's back behind that blasting me, that makes me want to cry <laughs> <laughs> Uh, question from chat. Um, first, oh, first, a rules check. Uh, Greg, you lose two health from the previous card. You're right. Don't forget. Um, and then a question from Firestem4. How did you decide on the colors you're using for the artwork? I think it makes for a very striking style. Love it. So so how, what's the genesis of that? Um, my, whole, my whole thing with that is that, like with comic book art and like uh, manga and everything else, I just, I've always preferred them not colored. I just, I, I just think it's raw, and I just think it's better. Just, I just think black and white stuff like this is just, I just like it better. I've always preferred it, and I just remember when we started, I was just like, a, I just, I really want this really heavy blacks, you know, just really cut hard, and um, it's just a preference thing. I just, it, I wanted it to look as far away from something like Magic: The Gathering or like a Lord of the Rings thing or or hearthstone or any of that stuff i just wanted it to not that i love all that stuff you know i love parchment paper and all that crap but it just it, it's everywhere you know so i was like mm -hmm. i want to make it look like an 80s fanzine and like like it's been through a xerox machine like 15 times and you know and just really hard like it was just what i kind of i don't know it's just what i saw in my head yeah and i i think um i think that's that's a good that's a good point to make too is that um, you might not be able to see it in in how we're streaming, but you can definitely tell in the cards. There's there's a texture on these mm -hmm. that's kind of throughout. There's like a lot of almost like dots on it, and kind of almost I don't want to say like grime, but it feels it it feels like it's a page out of a comic book kind of. And is that something that gets layered on after the fact, or is that something that Ben is putting in, Greg? How does that process work? No, I actually, I've been putting that stuff in after. Okay. Okay, cool. And like, he'll send me a, it, it's nice and clean and then I'll dump some extra layers of, of stuff on top. Cool. Very cool. Um, yeah. Uh, some, some extension, uh, uh, a, a comment in chat. I love the decision. It's really great. And it stands out. doesn't feel samey. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I think, and I, I have to assume that really that's what got everybody's blood pumping on the kickstarter campaign is just a combination of the art of ben that it's very striking with the design decisions mm -hmm. um for the layout of the cards and then the coloring um and just sort of all the you know because greg i don't know if you if, if you want to mention just a little bit sort of your background because you're a designer right you're like a graphic and product design background yourself right so it's not just you're a game design guy no, I'm not a game design guy at all. I, well, now I, you are. You, you now, are. now you are, man. <laughs> I a few hours ago. As of, yeah, a few hours ago, I developed games. Um, no, I, I, I work on, I spend most of my time working on shoes. So I'm not a shoe designer, but I work on a, um, uh, Mark Nace in Los Angeles, the um, uh, the website for the shoes. Um, and before that, I, I, you know, I've just, I'm a designer. I've worked on all kinds of different things over the years. But um, I mean, that's what I'm doing currently. So, well, hopefully, I mean, hope, hopefully soon you're you're doing this full time. That's what yeah. that, we got to all push for that. I mean, there were people asking in the comments about expansions and things like that already, weren't they? Like, when's the next one coming? <laughs> Come on, you finished a couple hours ago. Right? You're trolling me, like. <laughs> Who brought this guy? Who let this guy into the stream? Um, See, so even this chat saying seconded more expansions. <laughs> yeah, that's a second boss. So, I mean, it's like there's plenty of content. Um, no, I don't know. Let's just try and make it through this. I, I, yeah, I, fair enough. I have sleepless nights right now just trying to figure out how I'm going to get Chapter 4 done by the end of December. So, yeah, uh, Firestem Force says, don't care, need more, Greg. 
right hey right. That's, yep. that's that's the position you want to be in man you know you want to yeah. have people people really hooked this is great but, but firestorm hasn't played it what if he uh you know he bails after bad guy number three you know it's a yeah no we'll see how it goes you know cool. i would love to make these on and on and on but um right now i'm just focused on getting this thing you know to the point where we can get it to a manufacturer you know yep the whole new scary set of things to do once i get there yeah uh, I, I imagine sort of the the transition from celebration to mm -hmm. uh like terror has got to be um jarring you know to go from today to tomorrow not not to not to get like real down here greg but like just to, to go from like having to deliver after the day of like yeah this is awesome has got to be a terror, little bit. Terror began about 10 minutes after I clicked launch. <laughs> I, was, I was calling everybody, trying to be talked off a cliff. Um, yeah, so no, no, I'm actually feeling a little better now that that whole business is done. Yeah. That was, that thing was, that was terrifying. The last like 28 days. Oh my God. Whew. All right, let's 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 take the twins on. All right, yeah, I, the, these enough. guys are tough. I mean, if if you thought the Dorman um, w was a challenge, these guys are way 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 worse. So so their their thing, they have these um, a logo on each of their attacks that they actually do it uh, twice. So um, they're gonna they're gonna be really pounding our allies here significantly. Uh, yeah. yeah, the Kickstarter just ended. Um, question in chat: The Kickstarter just ended uh, today. So you just missed it. There, there's there's some some gnashing of teeth in chat where they missed the Kickstarter. I've got all these people emailing me today. They're like, oh, I, I, I marked it and I missed it. And I'm like, I'm like, all you have to do is put a dollar on it. Yeah, gotta... yeah. Get into you could get into the the pledge manager sure. at least. Yeah, they're asking for late pledges and all this stuff, and I'm just I don't even know how to I don't know what to do. But anyhow, well, sorry, I'm making this thing last forever. But this is kind of the whole thing, you know. It's you, you have a few people around you. You're playing, you're, you're talking, you're having fun. I mean, this is kind of what I want, you know, it's, you know, you kind of, you, know, you just hang out, you, you, know, you toss a few dice, you look at a few pretty cards and, yep. you know, you don't mm -hmm. do the best. So. Yeah. And then I think the other thing to, to worry about um, is that sometimes you just die, you know, like, <laughs> we, I don't know if we'll run into any of those tonight, but sometimes you just, you make yes. the wrong call. And, yeah. and you get a party wipe. So I love it. I think I think that that is to me the most unique and kind of boldest decision of the design, Greg. If, if, you know, like if I can heap some praise on you, I suppose, is uh -huh. to to just sort of ignore. Okay, am I going to be worried that people are going to be pissed off if they're in the middle of a game and they play for a half hour and then they just get to a card that says like, "Oops, sorry, buddy, you're done for tonight." Um, yeah. But I like it. I, I think it's really cool because it, it creates that feeling. I'm kind of a Dark Souls video game player kind of guy. It creates that feeling. Firestem, thanks for the follow. Um, it creates that feeling of like, oh man, I might, I might really make a mistake here and, and get blown up. Like I think that's, I think that's cool. I like it a lot. Yeah. That happens really deep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but after you play it a couple times, it's kind of fun to hit that card, right? Like. Yeah. Well, that's. The best part about going back and like trying to get to the things that I the cards I didn't get to to draw last time, no matter what they were, and that's, and supposed, it's hard to to that's supposed to be the thing to kind of collect all the endings. Like what I've done yeah. now, I have I've no, I have the end, endings numbered now, so it'll say like ending one, ending two, ending three, ending four. So I mean, you can be like, oh, I never hit ending four before, you know, and you know, hopefully that's something you know you don't flip through the deck and it'll kind of surprise you. Anyhow, okay, so let me fight. Okay, so so uh, a, a point from chat. Steve healed up. I, I gave Steve his health back. Uh, he's back up to six health. And yeah. then you guys do have a bonus uh, armor. Steve didn't have his bonus armor, but you have it now, Greg. So, okay. um, so all right. I got hurt, and I'm just going to roll for my recoup so that I can get going again. Um, okay, so I got two back, and that's perfect. Nice. Oh, so okay, you, just, you, just, you just rested right out of the gate. Yep. Got it. I kind of had to. All right. We needed to go kind of hard at this guy, right? Um, I think we should just throw everything. All right, <laughs> then let's go frag cannon. Hell yeah, it. four, four. All right, so we'll move four. to four. We're not gonna let. We're not letting Steve touch the cubes. Not touching the cubes. We're not doing that. All right, here we go. Come on. Oh, three, <laughs> wait, hold on. We should though. All right, four That's damage. Right. Yep. All right. So, 
Okay, you do that. Yeah, that's fine. I got it. So four damage. Um, and then you you. What happens if you get a kickback armor and you're full, Greg? It goes to, it goes right to the strength meter. Oh, it does. Okay, cool. Any any threshold thing that we get more than, you can just put it in the top one. The oh top yeah, one. sorry. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Cool. Um, all right, so you did a little damage, and then Ben, let's uh, let's see what the twins are up to. Oh no, I'm sorry, I gotta flip this. Oh no, guys. Ooh, it's, this is not going well for us. No, no. Okay, so they got the turn. Oh, it's turncoat though, because that that's kind of interesting, isn't it? It's interesting, but it's it's really rough. Yeah. But okay, go ahead. All right, so it's gonna attack uh, Steve, and then what's what's the what's the damage here? Oh, oh no, nice. Oh, good. Okay. Woo. All right. Thank God. All right, so that nothing happened. Have, that would have wiped him off. Oh, really? Oh, hey, yeah. I think yeah. I get to. Re I didn't do a recoup roll, right? Uh, you did not do a recoup roll. Oh, Never mind. It doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I love how many ones have come out tonight. What a mess. I think the dice are broken. See, I, I have to laugh because because I swear every time we play. So now now that this is digital, right? It's it's very easy to be like, these dice are boned. What's wrong with these things? Um, but the last time, Greg, you and I played, we pounded everything. We we destroyed it. We did the mushroom men like perfectly. Like yeah. the way it, like if we were yeah, it was like yeah. So so it, you know, some some games is good, some games is bad, which tells me maybe the dice are perfect. Uh, yeah. All right, so um, so you're up, Greg. What are you gonna do? All right, yeah, yeah. Now we're now we're going. We're doing it all. Oh, I love it. All right, so for Silk Barrage again. Here we go. Seven. Ooh, all right, so six damage. Six damage. Yeah, you right, can. So I got him. Yep. You can take care of all that nonsense. So four goes. So you got you you you're into their health pool. You you got them too. Right, I'll get rid of that. My recoup zero. That's fine. I I, I did my part. Steve, why don't you like? I'm jump. gonna recoup. What do you mean you're gonna? So you're gonna heal. What? What are you gonna do? You're gonna heal or rest? Sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna rest. Sorry, rest and recoup. All right. All right. So, okay, yeah, that's and nothing. So I just get one back. And then, we, and then what? We put one on his on his uh, health meter on his uh, rest meter, right? Am I doing that right, Greg? Put one on his rest meter, and he, and yeah, and he gets one back. Yep. Did he get his one back? There he goes. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. So uh, twins. Okay. Does not get a six. Oh, let's see. Yeah, let's see what they do next. All right, a two. <clears throat> and he's attacking Greg with a two, or they're attacking Greg with a two. It's two. No, no, that's two hits. So you got to roll one more time. We missed the first one, so we got to roll again. And he missed again. Okay, good. Yeah, that's lucky. Oh, yeah, because you roll twice. That's right, because they attack twice. So, um, Ben, you got to actually roll an additional time now for the recoup roll. Five, oh, which is good. one. Yeah. All right. All right, cool. Okay. Um, I now am going to rest because I spent everything last go round. I get a four, so I get two back. That's good. Steve, it's all you. Um, you put one on your meter. Oh, yep, yep. Sorry. I should know my own rolls. I'm going to do the mini cannon. So I'll take. All take right, so I'll clear this off of there. And then you're going to lose two health. Yep. And then you're going to blast them. See what you do. Ooh, seven. seven. All right. Three damage. All right, we're getting there. Chipping away. Oh, and recoup. Five. I'm going to get something back. Uh, I get one back. One back. All right, so you're still living. Yeah, we're good. This is working out long. All right, so the twins. Let's see what the twins are going to be up to. A three, and let's see who they attack. Attack and Steve. Ooh. And then they're attacking with the whistle fists. That's a miss, and one more. Oh my god. One more. You got to do one more, Ben, for the second attack. Oh. Oh, double nice. miss! Oh my gosh! Oh. The twins. <laughs> it was like it was like a, it was like a, it was like a Keystone Cops. We had we had trouble with the dormants. This is good. Yeah, yeah. All right, Greg, what are you doing? Okay, so mm, uh, it's tough because. Okay. 
I'm just gonna do one. So I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna do one. That's a good needle strike. Come on. Yes. On the need on the needle dart two. I'm see no wait, I did one. Yeah, sorry, needle dart two. So I didn't yeah, so, do so a three damage. Yeah. Nice. That was, that was the right move. That was that was super lucky. Holy moly. And then a three, so uh, all right. no, no recoup. I'm I'm happy with that. I did what I needed to do. All right, Sydney, what do you got going? <clears throat> um They got three health left, so I know, and I've only got two two life in me. I say heal. All right. I mean, you know, just rest, just rest. Because if he take an extra one back, you know what though? Um, back. Yeah. No, that's fine. We're already so, good. Yeah, you get three back, right? Yeah, that's what we need to do. Yeah, you're in you're in great position now. Because he could have killed you. <clears throat> All right, so let's see what the uh, the twins are going to do here. Three. Okay. Which is the whistle fist? It's attacking Steve. Or they're attacking Steve. First one's a miss. Oh. <laughs> and then what's the Come second on. one? A four. And that's a miss. <laughs> wow. Man. So so right before this attack what? happened, two two guys were carrying a big sheet of plate glass across like a, a, a busy street. And then <laughs> the twins smashed through it. <laughs> Gosh, these guys, they're, they're, you know, like one of them pulled out a hammer and he got hit on the head and then it yep. grew into a really tall knob. And then the other one pushed it down and the first guy's tongue came out. You know, it's just, what are these guys doing, these two? You know what you haven't been doing is you haven't been laying out the cards to see if they've done a double fives or double six. Well, I mean, keeping, I mean, keeping track of like, it, so if, if they hit a two, then, you know, like I started over essentially. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, oh, and they need to recoup. I don't think we've been recouping for them, so. <clears throat> uh, no, no, they get no nothing back. You know, I, I should not have drawn them that bad. As that, so horrible. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you drew them too tough. You drew them too tough, man. <laughs> Normally, there were. That's you know what? That's the whole thing. Yeah, we had a trouble on on the dormant, and we're doing fine with this, which is fine. You know, it's a. You don't want it to go the same way each time. <laughs> Yeah, and normally I've if, of of the bosses, I, I feel like I've had some of the most struggles with the twins because of the double attack. Mm -hmm. I mean, they would just lay on the damage. But uh, when you have a mask on half of your face, it's hard to see. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. A bunny that was dressed like a woman came by, and then the two of them got distracted and they followed after it. <laughs> I'm just gonna continue with Looney Tunes nonsense. All right, um, okay. So Greg, you're up, man. Okay. Um, they have three left. Um, Ooh, you're in a kind of a, a tricky situation here. Yeah, I'm in a bad spot. Um, but I have a wall, a three-point wall. Um, they haven't been hitting us at all, so I'm going to go one. Needle dart two. And get a four. So two damage. Two damage. All right. So if Steve I'll, can uh, finish him off here. I got a, no recoup again. <clears throat> all right, yeah, so kill, kill them. Cool. So we'll just do the mini cannon again. So two. Yeah, they're done. Or not. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, but I get one back. Okay, right. get, get one back. I'm gonna die. Probably because. Of... All right. So let's see what they do. Another three. So okay. The double three is nothing, but it's the whistle fist. Uh, all right. So they're attacking Steve. As always. Yeah. And With they, a they miss on the first one. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. So uh, 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 an old woman put a pie out onto a, <laughs> a, a windowsill, and then bo both, of the, both of the twins, they floated up by their noses, and they floated across the backyard, and then she slammed the window down on their fingers. That's what happened this round. But you know, it's still alive. <laughs> All right, uh, Ben, you got to roll a uh, recoup for him. Ooh, and the back. Eight. All right, there we go. Oh my God! All right, see now, see this is where things. This is just this is terrible. All right, and now you're in trouble, right? So you're gonna heal. Yeah, I have to rest. Yeah. Um, Ooh. Ah, there we go. So four back. Four. That's it's nice. over for them. It's over. Okay, finally. All right, All Steve, right. you could still kill him. I mean, maybe. 
Yeah, I'm no. Do the force deflection. So that's three. Okay. Whoa. I'm yeah, going yeah. for it. Oh, oh <laughs> my God. <laughs> This is depressing. Oh, I get one back. I get how many do I get? Back? Just one back. Yeah. One one back. Back. Man, I hey. love it. I love it. We the, we we spend like fifteen minutes talking about how badass Sydney is before we start this battle. <clears throat> then Steve. Everyone, then Steve takes over. Between the twins and I, I think we've rolled more ones. <laughs> where they're at. So everyone's just kind of punching, you know, just right. in place. <clears throat> All okay. right, so let's see what the twins are doing. Twins are doing a three again. They just keep doing the whistle fists. Four. You're coming at uh, Greg. You're coming at me, by the way. With a one. one. Interesting. <laughs> and a four. <laughs> okay. All right, so so this turn, um, uh, uh, the twins, they took their shotgun, and they turned it. It, 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 didn't, it didn't work, and they fired it, and a little bang flag wow. came out. And then after that, they looked into it to try to figure out what was going on, and when they pulled the trigger, it peeled downwards like a banana, right. and then their whole face was covered in soot, except for their eyeballs, which they blinked a couple of times. Uh, so that's what happened. All right. Well, you know what? I'm gonna. I'm ending this. Oh, yeah, recoup. Gotta well. recoup right? yeah, yeah, recoup. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Man, yes. there, there. this is rough. Okay, so I'm doing three. I'm getting rid of this. I'm killing them. With an eight, oh, with he's a, dead. Eight, five, done. Go five. ahead. Oh, you did it, guys! Holy moly! Oh, I was complete. Man. I was completely out of Looney Tunes references. I think there, so we're lucky that we we took them out. All right. All right. Good deal. Um, did I delete the card which told me where to go? I think I might have. Yep. Oh. Um. I, I'm. Okay. I'm no, it's fine. I'll, I'm pulling it back in. It's fine. My bad, my bad. Okay, so after we defeat them, we are going to the end of the encounter. Uh, reveal card 21. <clears throat> so we didn't get to see the crazy um, thing that happens in the boss if we got the five and five and, or six and six, but you know that I, I think that is cool that it's just sort of a thing that you only see every once in a while. Um, all right, another triumph. Congratulations, yeah, guys. It's so, fun. Right. Go ahead, Greg. No, I was just going to say a cool thing that you know, I want to do if we can, I just, I just don't know how things are going to go. But like for that, there's a thing that happens with the twins and you fight them again with like different stats and things like that. Yep. I thought it would be really cool if we have a pull card where you get to see the twins, a new version of them because one of them dies. So this thing would be so cool if we had like, you know, another card and it has the stats on there and we just have the one twin still standing kind of thing. Yep. So yeah, it's just, you know, cool. Where, um, yeah, Ben. <laughs> right, you got the artist on the line. Yeah, yeah. That's that's like a wish list thing. Like if we're all done and I see how much, you know, I just, you know, it'd be so it would be it'd just be a really cool one to be able to have that. Yeah, but. especially like when you do hit it, you know, not to not to necessarily say exactly what happens, but when you do hit it to get kind of the benefit of some cool new art would be cool. Yeah, um, I would. Yeah, right. we'll just see how much stuff we actually have to do. You know, I'm like worried about the volume of yeah. stuff i'm always trying to make it so that you know find ways where you know we can make it more manageable yeah. that's the way that it would be but it's a, it's on it's on the wish list cool um oh i put my phone in the view there sorry um okay so um congratulations you increase the ally hit point threshold by one so you can add a threshold on the uh, score tracker up there as you strike the final blow, the remaining twin falls on the body of his dead brother. He hastily pulls a cylinder out of his belt and presses his finger to the top. With a rush of wind, their bodies turn to dust and suck into the cracks between the tile. The cylinder is left behind spinning on the floor. Only <clears throat> half a face mask remains. Little else. All right, you must decide. Chat, first one, first person. What are we doing? Are we taking the mask, going after the cylinder, or leaving it? All right, we're taking the mask. So we're revealing card 22. You guys are really, uh, you're playing with fire here, I think, by going after the mask. Like, gross dudes were just wearing that thing. All right, the twins mask. I love this art. This is the first mm -hmm. art that I saw was the mask. Um, and it's the same art that's on the, um, the cards that I've been flipping over here. I think, Steve, I think you had it on an Instagram post. Maybe. And I was like, whoa, that looks... 
uh, I don't know. It looks like a made out of wood, kind of like tribal, creepy, find it in the woods type mask. I don't know. I love I love that, Ben. So thanks for drawing it. <laughs> no problem. Um, okay. So increase ally hit point thresholds by one. Uh, the twins each wore half a mask, one of the halves. The left side lies on the floor where the twins just were. The half mask looks to be made out of petrified wood. It's unsettling. So this is cool. I think this is new from the first time I played this, Greg, is that you have kind of little things that can occur based on if you have certain characters in your ally pool currently. And so Hildegard is not in our party right now. If Hildegard was in our party, something weird occurs. And there are a lot of these that kind of happen as you go through the game, um, which I think is just kind of a neat little stinger that can occur to you um, depending on what heroes you currently have, which is cool. <clears throat> Yeah, this is one of this one this idea that came like in the middle of the night. Like, I woke, woke up, I keep my iPad next to me, and I just jotted it down. I was like, "Oh God, we got to do like, uh, yeah, we got to do this." And then, uh, yeah, he, Ben just did this like last week. Oh, sweet! Did, oh, really? Yeah, the the little ferret there. I, I just it was one of those things. I was in a panic one night while uh, this Kickstarter thing was going on, and. Um, I was like, oh, I need, you know, for this. I was like, we need to put this in there. And, and yeah, he quickly did that little guy. And we uh, got him in here just for this, more or less. Just yeah, so this is, this is hotter than hot off the presses. This is stuff that, that has just never seen the light of day until today. Just yeah. It looks great. Doesn't he look great, little guy? Yeah, he looks awesome. I mean, and that's that, that's that damn ferret who, who rolled yeah, up yeah. into a ball and ran off earlier. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Um, right. So oh, if, if we had had Hildegard, we would have lost the zombie ferret, but Hildegard's already dead, folks, so we don't have to worry about the zombie ferret. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, so we end up um, we end up equipping yeah. the card, and well, I mean, I guess I guess that's the question. That's the question. I, I think everyone said take the mask, right? So we're gonna equip <laughs> it, even though we now see it, right? So we're gonna equip it. Who wants it? Well. If you think, if you roll a one on an action, you get strength, and Steve I mean, is a one machine. And and the the, the although the, so is Benjamin. I mean, let's be honest. Like, Bill <laughs> is called loser's luck, so I think Steve should have it. Yeah, I think right. I think that'd be good. Uh, he's he's rolled a lot of a lot of a lot of junk. A lot of yeah. ones getting rolled so far by uh by by Steve. All right, so let's yeah. move that. Okay, cool. All right, so you got the half a mask. Um, and then what were we going to reveal here? Reveal card 25. So I will bring it in. <clears throat> All right. The dim. After a few twists and turns, you come to a dead end. The wall is plain stone with one small square dead in its center. There are abstract symbols on it and a horizontal slit in the middle. Do you have a key? We do not have a key. So we, we, we weren't able to get one. I think that the first opportunity that we had to get a couple was after we fought the doorman and we, we were not able to. Taking him captive. That's yeah. the only way you can't get a key. And it happens. There's a bunch of lightweights. They, yeah. they don't kill anybody. Well, you got the bag of blood. I mean, at least. So that's good. Yeah. Um, all right. So we don't have a key. If we did have a key, um, we could uh, roll the dice and then maybe get something good um but uh we didn't and i think greg this is where the key dice were going to come in right yeah this was kind of an introductory thing just to kind of show somebody what would happen you know later on um i've actually altered a little bit so you can get a key a little bit easier than you could before um but i'm not really that concerned about it because more or less i just want you to be introduced to the idea of the you know it, there, there it, the, there's two things you're supposed to be trying to collect during the course of the game, it's keys and coins. So um, what you'll find is after one playthrough is that, okay, well, the next playthrough, I need to start looking for those things mm -hmm. and, and yep. find where they're at. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of how it goes. But anyhow. <clears throat> uh, so I failed to unlock it. Um, I think that's supposed to say unlock. <clears throat> Not to put you on blast here, Greg, it says unlock. That would definitely be unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah failed to unlock it um that's, that's erica's fault man she's that... <laughs> i failed to unlock it or i don't have a key um i will have to turn back and find a new way forward so we're going to reveal card 27 so i like this this is it, 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 like you said this is a cool kind of way in my experience 
Um, and I think Steve mentioned it too earlier, is that like as you're playing through, you hit stuff in this game where you remember like, oh, I got to remember that next time. <laughs> And and I gotta and 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 Greg hit this earlier too. Is that like you do forget? You think, oh, I'm gonna remember how to get that done, and then you go through again, and you're like, oh man, what did I do? Did I go left? Did I go right? I, I mean, and it kind of um, it almost creates this. Uh, you have this very hazy memory of your last time into uh, into the spire, um, and and it, it's almost like you remember thematically you kind of remember this dream the last time you were in the spire and this time you're kind of trying to work your way through it again with a little bit more knowledge um you're going to remember some of the big things but some of the small little minutiae of the details of which way you went or what you decided is, is something i at least maybe i'm an idiot i just don't remember it so no i have i have trouble yeah i mean i really um, do oh good uh, good reminder from the from the chat you guys each get one health extra yeah so you're now up to seven, Steve. I'm feeling strong. Yeah, I think I think that's the right that's the way you should feel. You 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 still had five armor that whole time, so you never got I hit. Think everybody rolled one. Yeah, you never got hit that entire. No, I just had to make sure I didn't spend all my health points trying to do things and kill myself. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The only way you the only way you hurt yourself was by being overexerted. Uh, all right, so we're gonna add card. We're we're now moving on to card twenty seven. All right, Dead Heat, you turn around and attempt to go a different way. You make a few turns and your path grows dark. If you have the Bag of Blood, Head of the Underdweller. So FYI, there was a way you could have gotten the Head of the Underdweller. Remember that for next time, everybody. Or the Rat Antenna. This is what happens. The item is soaked in glowing, or the item is soaked in glowing blood, producing some light. You find yourself at another dead end. There's a small series of shelves in front of you. They are bare, except for a single vial of another glowing red liquid. You pocket the item and turn around to find another path. You can tell you are heading in a new direction. The halls are changing. You start to see small patches of red moss on the walls. The air smells like decay. Equip this card and reveal card 31. So you guys get a blood bomb elixir, which is what you picked up. All kinds of fun stuff. Yeah. So whoever wants the blood bomb elixir can equip it. I can give it to Greg. He's got the blood bag. Yeah, I guess he was the one who probably uh, yeah, okay. used the Wait, blood. Wait, you want me? Okay, you want me to just blood all the time? Let's do it. <laughs> Add card thirty-one. Yeah, here we go. Right. <clears throat> this is cool. I got like options. Yeah, you you didn't use your bag of blood at all in the last encounter. I guess you you really yeah. didn't have a great opportunity to do so. You didn't. All right, so let me. There we go. Uh, okay. So, uh, Tale of Two Passages. You stand in front of two corridors. The right is an incline with beds of inverted mushrooms and red moss draping down. The left descends into darkness. All right, first one in chat. Wait, wait. What? We can't go to the dark corridor. Oh, okay. All right. Because that's, that's that's chapter four, and it, it doesn't... It doesn't is it, we don't have it in digital format. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so that's going to decide for us. But there was a question in chat from Sugarlips89. Um, what does the Blood Bomb Elixir do? And so the Blood Bomb Elixir, um, for a cost of two, it does a blood boost. And if you roll a five or seven, it does uh, six damage. And if you roll an eight, it does seven damage. So it, it does an insane amount of damage. Oh, no. It's, it's a single time grenade. Yes. Yeah. You can only use it once. So that's good. I mean, if you need to do a ton of damage, doing six damage on five is real good. Yeah, so it, it's a it's a one use item. <clears throat> All right, cool. So we can't. You said we can't go down to the dark, right? No, we can't go that way. All right. So, we so so we're gonna go to the fungus. Well, we gotta hold some of this stuff back, Greg. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, All right. So we're gonna go to the fungus corridor, and that just that makes me nervous to hear <laughs> those to hear those words. Because we. For experienced players of the game, we know what's coming. Yeah. Um, all right, so we're headed to the fungus corridor. You did so well last time. So. <clears throat> the mushroom men. Dun, dun, dun. The air is getting cooler, and the mushrooms thicker as you ascend. The vegetation becomes so dense, you would need to clear a path to continue. You conclude that nobody could have come this way. There are no signs of footprints or other activity. You turn to head back, but something has come up behind you. You attack. Reveal card 34. And I know, I know for sure what card 34 is. And I know what card 35 is. And 36. 
yeah, uh-huh. yeah I, know, I know i know those guys very we very well all right so here we go we're dealing with the mushroom men people um this is a cool battle this is i think it shows it's going to show you um how varied the actual um kind of boss battle mechanics can be uh so this is mushroom man number one um and there's some interesting special rules so he doesn't get attack cards he always attacks in the same way he always does the spore spray and either it's going to cause negative effects on you um uh actually it's essentially always going to cause negative effects on you and do damage and um and then the tricky thing is if you rest you spawn another mushroom man or if you miss you spawn another mushroom man which is bad news for our heroes because steve's going to take a lot of pressure here if he's not hitting the mushroom man. right now for whatever happened <laughs> Um, okay, so I'm going to get the Mushroom Men's health uh, ready to rock here. Yeah, last time we just killed him. We just up. destroyed him. Absolutely destroyed well, him. We never missed, and we blew him out of the water. We should so, try to do that again. Yep, I agree. He's got 12 health. So how many I got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, uh, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so there's his 12 health. And uh, you guys are all beefed back up, six and three, and seven and six. So you're ready to rock. Okay. Um, well, can't really miss. Otherwise, we're in trouble. So. Yeah, and this is where things are interesting because uh, for folks in chat, if you look at the if you look at the attacks that oh sorry if you look at the attacks that Greg has available to him. Um, what he hits on is different for every single attack. Sometimes he hits on all the way down to the two. Sometimes he hits at a three or a four or a five, right? So um, he probably wants to do one where he's going to hit at a three at Net least. Two. Yeah, I'm going to do the net snare. Net snare, okay. Yeah. yeah, the idea is, you know, you got to spend big. But if you were to miss, you know, it's going to be a problem. Okay, so here we go. You got him though. Yep. I did hit him. Yeah, hit him for three. Hit him for three. That's you know that's fine. It's not a miss. It's better than that. So. No, that's, that's good. Okay, so I'll uh, recoup or seven. That, yeah, that's great. Two health. That's that's, a, that's about as good as your opening salvo could be. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, all right, Steve, what are you doing? All right, let's. Uh... Oh, I should have done my blood bomb. Yeah, next time. Right? Next time. Yeah. Uh, we'll do the force deflection. So three. Three for, for three for Steve. Uh, oh, come on! Wait, <laughs> oh, Steve! Gotta be kidding me! <laughs> These guys are rigged. I swear to God, there's, there's something up with, with 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 the coding's bad. No, no, we have losers' luck. You get. Yeah, um, I do. I get the um the you twin. You get a strength. So that's right. plus one on your next attack roll. All right, so so we'll put a strength on him. Uh, but you. But he missed anyway on that one, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so gosh, guys. Yeah, and we need to put a marker on the mask too because you can only do that three times. Okay, so. All right, so here's here's what happens. Let me move all these guys out of the way. Got bad news for you. Yeah. So <laughs> when you miss, another mush mushroom man shows up. And I talked to I talked to Greg about this the last time, Ben. So th this isn't this isn't me just blowing smoke. I love the Mushroom Men drawings, and I love how they get steadily worse. So hopefully we're gonna get to see <laughs> all the Mushroom Men because they go. I they, they, see it. They go from happy to just despondent by the end. Like they're just like the the last one is the most pathetic guy in the world. Um, but I, I, I think that's really clever because when you first see them, you think, oh, they look the same. And then you look at them, you're like, oh, wait, that guy looks like hell. Um, all right, so we got a second mushroom, man, because Steve missed. Steve, you get a recoup? I did. It didn't. It failed. It failed. I'm okay. failure tonight. Um, and now the mushroom men are going to go. So mushroom man number one is going to attack first. He's attacking Greg. With nothing. Oh. And the second one. Wait, oh, no, so okay. that was he attacked you and then that was a five. Okay, so he hit me for one. You for one and he, he put and snuff he on you. Put snuff on me. Okay. And snuff is minus okay. one recoup roll. Yeah, it is. Okay. 
fine. Yeah, Fire Sam. A comment from Fire Sam. I'm so thrilled the artwork is different uh, for each mushroom. I figured like so many board games, they'd be the same image. I agree. The first time I actually, I'm going to tell you the truth. The first time I played them, I was like completely flustered. I think I was actually playing with you, Greg. The absolutely first time I fought the mushroom men. And I was just flipping them out there. And I didn't, I didn't really internalize how, how different each of the ones was. But we'll see. It, it, it looks like you guys are going to see a bunch of mushroom men here. So you'll, you'll see how bad they get. It's it's just so cool for for Ben to do it. I mean, he, all he had to do he just made one. And I was like, just make vari variations of their faces. Hey Ben, <laughs> what Greg's saying is that this part of the job was very easy for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even remember how I did those. And how how many I was supposed to do? Was it? Five? I think there's five. I think there's five of them, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, we were just. I was just like, just make different faces, and then I can just we can make a whole bunch of guys out of it. I didn't even know how many of those were in the game. I was just like, okay, do a couple faces. So I just threw faces on there. I was like, okay, hope, hopefully he likes one of them. And, and now they're like all there. They're all there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, okay, okay, so we, we got a second Mushroom Man. First Mushroom Man did a one damage with a snuff. So is that the snuff that we're doing here, Greg? I put it on. Okay. And then, um, all right, second Mushroom Man. Who's he going to attack? Ben? He's going to attack Steve. And he does a four, which is nothing. It miss. Uh, Good. Yeah. So, do we get another copy of Steve for the Mushroom Man? <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> we, get a, we get a second Steve. Um, okay. All right. So, Greg, what do you got up? Okay, um, I want to do this blood bomb thing. Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever done it, so. All right, so blood bomb it is. Let's roll an eight here, man. That would be so nasty. Nothing down. Oh, good. Six. Six, six damage, right? Six damage. You know, technically, you really should pick who I'm going to hit prior. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Because this is kind of like cheating. Yeah. Is now I can kind of choose. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to roll and do a random roll for it. So we'll just do the but, but wait, hold on, hold on. Before you do that, like you were either going to do six damage or seven damage, right? Wouldn't you have definitely picked the second mushroom man? Like why on earth would you ever have picked the first mushroom man? Because he has 12 hit points. Well, right. I, I well, guess. you know what? You're right. No, you're right. You're right. Let's get rid of, let's get rid of number two. Okay. Mushroom we'll take man number out. two. Blown away by a blood Good. grenade. That's, uh, I'm happy with that. Okay, so I'll do my recoup with a minus one. I got a six. So I didn't get one so back. It didn't make a difference. Right. And then okay. this just is one turn, right? Sadly, the blood bomb's gone. Oh, yeah. All right. <clears throat> so this, that um, that snuff was only for a single turn. Is that right, Greg? Yeah. All right, cool. All right. So I have so – I got something – I haven't used this one before. So for the mask – I had the loser's luck. Oh, yeah, so you got strength. Uh, strength. And a strength is a plus one on your attack roll. <clears throat> Which I think will come in very handy for you. Sweet. All right. I, I just got reinforcements. Holy me. moly. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my wife brought me down a beer, so thank God. All right. Oh, that's good. So, all right. So, Steve got re, re upped. And Greg yeah. disappeared. He, Greg ran off. So, He's like, wait, beer, I'm out. So so while Greg is away, uh, yeah, that's actually funny in chat. Uh, uh, Zeph Wagner says, you can't roll a one now, Steve. <laughs> Watch me. Yeah. Steve, somehow I've programmed in a zero into the D8. Yeah. Somebody earlier said that, I'm not saying that the dice are rigged, but the dice are rigged. I'm yeah beginning to agree with them well it's kind of funny because the dice part of this i that, that's not something that i wrote I, I i work with another programmer on this thing and, right, uh, we'll and for sure mike mike uh built the dice part of this and so i let me tell you when the team plays together and we stream on tuesday nights generally together i give him grief all the time when the dice are not going my way um and he swears up and down that it's it's just a, a random number generator but i i don't know if i believe him well all we'll right, so what here. All right, so Greg's let's, back. Let's rock and roll. Let's do. Uh, we're gonna do the mini cannon. Okay. Mini cannon, and you get a plus one on your roll for strength. Uh, all right. Oh, yeah. oh that's, that's an eight. One. 
So an eight does three damage and re-kicks you a armor. So put the armor up in the strength meter. Yep. And three damage. <clears throat> All right. And then we put an armor in his strength meter. And then... Get, um, get rid of his... Um... He gets rid of his strength. Yeah. Uh, deal. And then go ahead and recoup. One. All right. Not bad. You guys are you guys are doing all right Ooh. now. Mushroom man, let's do something nasty here, Ben. So hits Steve. He's going after Steve, and let's see. Oh, a miss. No. That's and fine. And he recoups. Yeah, you got to roll a recoup. Doesn't recoup. All right, you guys got a chance to take him out. Yeah, let's get rid of him. Um, wait a minute. Okay. I'm curious, how many of the folks in chat um, are backers of the campaign? I imagine that most everybody here is, but um, shout out if, uh, if you are. And shout out if you're still happy that you are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that is a question. You know, when Greg and I were talking about, about doing this uh, playthrough, I, I think that it's always an interesting challenge because I do a lot of these with people who have games going on Kickstarter. And a lot of times, like, it's prototypes, right? It's stuff that, all right, yeah, really happy. I'm very excited to see this in play. So, yeah, that's great. Um, cool. But I, I'm, always, I'm always a little bit anxious about that, too, because a lot of times it's, like, a, a, a in-process rule book. Uh, a lot of times the cards and, 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 um, and components are not finalized or whatever. And so I do think, as a creator, it's nerve-wracking to just sort of throw it out there and be like, oh, we're just going to let people see it while it's in flight. Um, but, um, but yeah, I'm glad to hear that people think it, it looks cool. I love it. So I'm not surprised to, to be fair. I mean, these three chapters other than, you know, like unlock and unlock are pretty much done. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're done. I, I, I'm really kind of, it's just like grammatical things. If there's no pots for missing here. And yeah. There. I mean, the one that I printed out almost, God, probably almost a year ago. Right. Would that, would it have been that long ago? I don't know. I, I mean, it was it was a while. It was it was during the summer, maybe. So it was like it was six months, eight months really? ago, something like that. But it, but it was for those first three chapters, everything looks really similar. There isn't a ton that's changed, other than those little like, oh, if you have Hildegard in your in your party, this can happen. Like all those little kind of bonuses. But everything oh. else has been pretty pretty static. This chapter cool. you never played. The wait, so go ahead. This this chapter three you haven't played. Oh, chapter no. three. You guys just played it for the first time last Monday. Correct. Yes. But, yes. Um, but since then, all the illustrations are in now. Yeah. Too. Yep. So. Um, so yeah, uh, in the chat, everybody, everybody, we have backers. People are backers. Really happy. Very excited to see this in play. Uh, the previous Vorpal video convinced me. Uh, Greg, I'll send you a bill. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the scope of the game isn't outrageous either. Some Kickstarter board games are so extensive, you worry about being able to deliver. Uh, yeah. That helps make a choice about backing. I totally agree. I think yep. um, I, the one thing that I was, from the very start, very drawn to this specific campaign is that it was, um, it didn't at all feel like what I believe to be a little bit of kind of manipulative type campaigns where there's a lot of stuff that's uh, stretch goals and weird additional pledge tiers and first 48 hours and really really pushing all the fear of missing out buttons i understand that that's like a business model it's totally fine and i have a lot of games that are like that but i was specifically interested in this one just because it was like the antithesis of that it was just a really focused vision that wanted to get made that wasn't playing games with you it, you know it was it was just i'm gonna make this game here's what it is this is what it costs no nonsense um which i thought was really cool <clears throat> yeah yeah, and, and the moment I broke from it, I, I got, like, when that sleeve thing came up, I don't, oh, man. The one, did you see there was a few people in there that were like, oh, this guy's putting on add-ons. Yeah, and he just left. And I was like, I didn't know that was a bad thing. Yeah. Like, an add-on on a game, they were like, oh, it's one of those games. Well, I mean, that one's tricky because, frankly, you hear people who want them, right? You start a right. campaign, and then you see people saying, where are all the stretch goals? What the hell are you doing? And it's like, well, but then, yeah. then you do the stretch goals, you do the add-ons, and then you have people, like, run away, right? So I don't know. I've always felt like this game had, like, a real focus. You knew what you wanted to do. You're going to have the big cards, and you have people swarming in and saying, I don't like the big cards, and you're saying, no, we're doing the big cards, you know? Um, 
I don't know. I, I, I was attracted to this from the very start for all those sort of very creative reasons. So I'm, I'm very happy. If, if you can't tell, I'm very happy that it, that it was successful. Uh, I'm happy. Yeah, I imagine. <laughs> um, uh, okay, cool. So so um, let's kill this guy. What are you yeah, doing? Get him, take Please, him down. Yeah. Wait, whose turn is it? I think it's you. you. I think it's you. It's my turn? Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to go for broke here. Yes. Um, this you is, know, you're playing right into Ben's hands. Come on, spend all three. Come on, dude. I might spend all four. <laughs> and do if the I do the four, de yeah. If I spend all four, I can you almost get your death blow, blow right? Kill this guy. In fact, you know what? I'm doing it. Awesome. I'm doing it because then I can also do my death move too. Give it to you, and we we get him no matter what. Yeah. I'm just doing. Right, and, and, then, and then we get to see another hero too. So yeah, then we get to see here. So yeah, I have this put in. This is something. This is you can do this. You can exert so much energy that you die. <laughs> yes. And um, I'm doing it right now. I'm doing my suicide here. Which is, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm spending everything I got. All Every right, bitch so, does. So, here we go. Silk so barrage. Oh, six. it's six damage. Six damage. I killed myself, and I did six. You and killed him. Six. Perfect. Sweet. Way to go down on a blaze of glory. Yeah, I love it. You Killed you it. silk barraged so hard that you perished. <laughs> All right, so your item stays, right? So um, item stays to yeah, live another day. All right, let's see who you got next. There we go. Ooh. The Viking lumberjack. I love it. <clears throat> Nothing better about a lumberjack wearing plaid with a hammer. Yeah, yeah, I love the plaid, and I like that he has a, a jackal jackalope with him. It's great. Ben, did this one really confuse you? Just like, what the hell does that guy want? Uh, no, no, it was it was fine. Like, I I like the ones where you give me like a little sketch of what you're looking for because I kind of know where to go to. I actually like. Oh, no, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, because because like otherwise, you know, when somebody just says, "Yeah, like draw a lumberjack," you never know, really know what they want. So it's always good if there's like a little sketch or a doodle. Like I know your doodles, you know, it's always like a little pen and just on a piece of paper, it's just two circles and a line. And I'm like, okay, that helps me to know what I'm going for. That's funny. Hey, how'd you guys meet? I actually posted. I actually. I just. I was looking for people and I was on DeviantArt, I think. And I ran across his stuff and I just, I think I just emailed you, uh, right? Yeah, it was, it was like uh, Inktober two years ago. Um, yeah. Like for the people that like not, not that into art or drawing, uh, Inktober is kind of like every year in October. It's like a challenge for artists to do like an ink drawing every day for like 31 days and upload it to social media. Mm -hmm. And I did like this one drawing of like a prison cell and a boar or guard type guy. And yeah, he has yeah. Like a, yeah, he has like a key and the hand is reaching out of the cell, grabbing the key. And I think like because yeah. the game was about keys, you, you just saw this and were like, oh, this is kind of what I'm looking for. And maybe I could should contact this guy and give him a shot. Yeah, I think that, I think you're right. I think that was exactly what it was. It was <laughs> definitely the October thing. Yeah, I, I know that the little guy is a little fat guy, like sitting on a stool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that thing's great. Um, yeah. And do you, um, I had a question for you, Ben. Do you, um, is this all, do you like paint digitally or are you doing this in physical medium? Um, no, like, like I, I love doing these in like a physical thing, like all the Inktober drawing, like all the ink drawing I do, but it's just impractical from like a, you know, like a, like a technical point and, and business standpoint, because if I screw up something, something goes wrong down the line i have to basically redo the card yeah, of greg yeah. it's like oh hey by the way uh the this is not the item that goes on there we gotta replace this and stuff like, i can't do that with like uh traditional mediums so i think it kind of comes close like the the way i use like the, the softwares i use to do these and the combination it, it gives it this traditional feel while also being like the little little modern digital i don't know how to call it and I, th I think it kind of works out with like the the, the little um, frac and then what what's it called like the, the grimy stuff on there. It, it looks it looks traditional enough, I think. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I I actually 
now that I ask the question, there are no stupid questions, folks. But now that I ask the question, <laughs> I kind of realize that it's a dumb question because we've been talking about how you and Greg went back and forth and like made changes. And obviously, you couldn't be easily making changes to yeah, an ink yeah. drawing after the fact. But, um, <laughs> but, but I, it works for me. I mean, I, I would have. It was enough for me to look at it and think, oh, maybe that was done on with pens on paper. You know, like uh, that. I, I think you you accomplished that goal for sure. Yeah, I, I think if we would do those traditionally, it would be like three times like the time per illustration, and it will also like triple the costs and stuff like that. So yeah. it just <laughs> it, it, it you know it it would be cool to do something like that, but it's like very hard from a business standpoint. Yeah. Cool. Um, a question from chat uh, from Firestem. Do the playable characters have official backstories, Greg? Is that something that you uh, that you're gonna have in there? Um, you know, as a, a good friend of mine during the beginning, um, he told me his first like note. It was like, you know, it'd be really cool if you had like a little bit on the card, like a, their little bio, you know. But I was, and I was like, that's really cool. But the whole point, you know, is that you randomly choose, and if I do anything on the other side, it's gonna give away who they are. So, I mean, in my head, I have little backstories for them and all that stuff, but no, I don't have them anywhere. You know, I, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I guess the short answer is no. I, I just don't know where I would incorporate it. That screams art book, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's another add-on you can throw just in. Just get those add-ons going. I know that you just finished the campaign, but maybe do a maybe do a Kickstarter for an art book. Let's start another one tonight. <laughs> I think, yeah, well, yeah, we'll see. That's, I mean, that's not the line. Um, you know, but I did want, I was thinking about doing was for the new character, the, the Tiki character. I was thinking about, since she's a bonus one, I was thinking about, because I love that freaking trunken head that he made. It's like, if there's anything of the whole game, I like the twins. My second favorite thing is that little shrunken head. <laughs> and I was thinking about just on her card, since she's a bonus character, maybe we just, um, we just have on the back that shrunken head just because I want it in print. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, she's going to be kind of a bonus character and she might be a little weird. So I was thinking maybe it's one of those things where you just kind of, you know, kind of throw her in. Yeah. Like you, you might not keep, treat her as random, you know, not in your, yeah, your normal yeah. random pool. Yeah. I used to put that thing in there. Um, and if I did that, then I could put a little bio thing on there. I could do a whole little, little deal. Yeah. I have a whole story for her. Like I got the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, you got to use that stuff, man. That's cool. I think I, you know, I, I, I do think that these characters and the designs and just the work you guys have done in this world, the mm -hmm. world is very unique feeling. So, yeah. you know, just just being able to even a few sentences about some of these people, where the hell they came from, what is this guy's deal? What is the deal with his lumberjack? Right? You know. Like, so. Like with the Tiki thing, when I put it up, they're like, well, wouldn't it make a lot more sense to have like a, an African character show up? Because if they're in, you know, you know, Norway or wherever the Vikings are. And I was like, oh, oh, you're thinking way too literal here. Yeah, 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 exactly. I was like, this is a nondescript place and time. These are not Vikings. This is not even our dimension, my friend. Yeah. Oh, oh. Wow. If you have in there. Transdimensional travel, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. So I got I, I threw the faces out here because I wanted we didn't get to see all of the mushroom men, but I wanted to show you what they look like, right? So they just I love how they get progressively more decrepit, <laughs> and this one at the end is my favorite. He looks like absolute hell, um, and there's a cool part of the mushroom man battle. I've fought the mushroom men probably four or five times now. I've seen it go to the full slate of mushroom men within like a turn because we're missing or we're resting or whatever um and then as greg and i mentioned we we beat we beat it once where we didn't see anybody but the first one um but the cool thing and we won't tell you what happens here but there is a cool thing with a with um with this with this final mushroom man if you're able to bring him in he only has three health and actually kind of like keep him around uh and get him to do this special move where he rolls a seven or an eight uh, a, a special thing happens, which is cool. Like, again, this is one of those, it doesn't happen every time. It might not happen every three or four times, but when it does happen, what'd you say, Greg? It may not ever happen, you know? Yeah, it might not, exactly, right? 
Um, but I've seen it happen naturally in a game session. We had it. We actually kind of forced it because we just let him live. We were like, we got to let him yeah. live. Just let him live. Uh, yeah. That's what you know. You can just try and do it. Yeah. That's, yeah. I have another place in the game where I'm going to do something else very similar to that, where if you know, you want to, you know, if, if you, if you want to just hold tight, you know, you can try and get to a certain thing. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and so, so that's cool. You know, th this is just an alternate kind of path that occurs if, if you get this inhale to happen. But we didn't have it happen. Um, you guys beat him after you beat him after two, and uh, I think like an idiot. Oh no! Reveal card forty-one is our next one. Yeah. Yep. All right. So I'm gonna blow all these away. And don't worry, everybody. We're just about to the end of our uh, our little playthrough here. Uh, don't worry, man. We're having a great time, Greg. Uh, hey, I'm having a great time. Yeah, I, I, cool. I think I think in the back of our minds, we all are kind of thinking of Ben. Uh, in you know, <laughs> breakfast at this point in time, right? Yeah, you're just gonna stay up, bud, right? Yeah, it's five a.m. now. Oh, oh, you're good. Once you start hearing those birds chirping, it's over. I can never go back to sleep once you get to that point. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> all right, we survived. So, so we ended up killing the mushroom man. Go ahead, Greg. We got a key yeah so nice. ally armor point threshold goes up by one so now our ally thresholds or armor thresholds are up and then um okay black ooze spills out of the dead mushroom men oddly the sounds are soothing that's gross i don't know why but that that line grosses me out greg just the idea that like sludge dripping out of a mushroom would like calm you down well there's actually some story important story things with that but I imagine it kind of like a cactus, but there's just like a ton in there. God, you're making it worse. You're making it worse, man. There's a lot of, ooze, there's a lot of fluids in the game. It's very fluid heavy. That's true. There, there's a ton of blood stuff for sure. Three different kinds of blood in the game, and they all matter a lot. That's, uh, yeah, so anyhow. So anyway, that, that, that has grossed me out reading it. But next to one of the slain creatures is a key covered in ooze. You pick it up half expecting it to jump out of your hand or burst into flames. Thankfully, it remains still. You hear a voice as you slip it into your pocket. You must act. You're either going to investigate the plea for help, or I'm going to answer that voice from here without getting any closer. Uh, so you get two rewards. You're going to get the spore key either way. But then you go a different path. So are we going to investigate this voice, folks? Or are we going to just say, eh, I'm not getting any closer. I'm going to, like, yell to him from far away. All right. So the first one was Fire Stem 4, Plea for Help. So we're going to investigate the plea for help. All right. So we get the Spore Key. So the Spore Key is cool. If an encounter, uh, during encounters, if a one action occurs, it happens again on the next turn, once per encounter. So, uh, so that's... <laughs> That's it. That's, that's that one's that's a, for the bad for the bad. Does guy. that make sense? Yes. It, that's one of those ones I wonder if people are gonna understand that that is the bad guy's attack. So I would have, I would have thought that that was any one action from that okay. reading. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I need to. I need to. Um, <clears throat> yes. If it's an enemy, yeah, to specify specific things, an enemy. Um, <laughs> Needs to specify an enemy. Yeah, so that's cool. So essentially, it would it would force an enemy to do a one the second time as well. Yeah, which is yeah, helpful. do it again. Yeah, from from uh, chat, folks wouldn't have gotten it as well. So yeah, specifying that I think would would be helpful. All right, okay. good. Everybody, uh, we're we're improving the game uh, real time. Um, okay, so um, we did plea for help. Hold on, I gotta see which direction we were gonna go. Uh, card forty four. Let's find out what happens, folks. It is kind of fun, uh, sort of knowing what happens, like sort of remembering a couple of these things and knowing. Is... All right, slumped survivor. You move. This is. Go ahead. Okay. I was gonna say this is Ben. This is the one you got. This is like the next one up, right? Yeah, it's the next one. Yeah, this is the next one. This is the this is the, the one illustration left from chapter three. We haven't we haven't hit yet. Well, give us an update, Ben. What's going on with this drawing? I mean, it's in the pipeline. That's all I can say <laughs> at this point. <laughs> uh, I love, like, kind of putting the screws to somebody who's, like, very talented and definitely is, like, doing things that are, like, wildly impressive and just be like, come on, man. Wait, when are you going to get this thing done? Come on, hurry a little bit, will you? He could have live streamed that while we were doing this. He could have sat there and sketched. Yeah. Ben, have you ever – have you messed with that at all? Because I actually – 
I love that idea. I, I am, I'm not like an artist. I'm a software guy, right? And I actually find it soothing and interesting to watch people draw. But is that something that um, you, would, you would find like really self-conscious or what? I mean, I was streaming on Twitch like three or four years ago. And I even had like a thing going where I would like stream like every day at nine oh, in cool. the morning. Cool. Um, but like I had like a second monitor and at some point that monitor broke down and it's just not enough real estate to like establish a stream. You have all the windows and the chat yeah. and stuff. Like that. So I just stopped and never really picked it back up again. And I don't have a second monitor still. So I have like an excuse <laughs> not to <laughs> do it. Well, let me know if you ever do, because um, I would love to watch some some Spire's end drawings happen. I mean, so. I can I will quickly really cool. like write something in the chat. So this is like me. Oh, in cool. There. So if you just want to drop a follow, just maybe I will. I'm always thinking about doing it, um, but yeah, I just I don't have the time currently, and uh, maybe maybe I will. Um, but yeah, it's mostly mostly personal stuff because like, especially with like projects and even like this, I don't know if Greg is okay if I just have like this on a stream and, and do stuff. I, I I don't want to lean out the window and just, you know, assume stuff and go out there and uh, stream something. But personal personal drawings is always, it's always fun. Just yeah, hopping that's in cool. there, having, having like a white canvas and randomly putting splashes down and then see what happens. Cool. All right. So, folks in the chat, um, Ben Ben commented in the chat. So, so follow him right there if you uh, want to see if he gets back onto Twitch. Um, that's very cool. I uh, I would enjoy that a lot. Yeah. Um, all right. So, Slump Survivor. Uh, there would be a Slump Survivor here. Just imagine him in your mind's eye. Uh, Can't wait. Uh, what'd you say? Can't wait to see this guy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited about it. Um, <laughs> All right, so you move towards the you move toward the voice through a clump mushroom the size of small trees. Your feet sink into the ground, cover releasing plumes of spores and dust. In front of you is a man sitting up against a rock wall. He's partially covered in black ooze. That black ooze again. There are large cracks on the floor between you. What happened here? You ask. I can't say for sure. We were taken. There was a struggle. The creatures that took us started fighting amongst themselves. During the chaos, we tried to get away. You're the first person I've seen since. So uh, what's interesting here is you ask him about the mushroom creatures, and he says they were ca taken captive as well, which is kind of a little twist on your what you would have thought was happening, uh, which starts to get a little bit into where the story might be taking. Um, and uh, so here we go. The floor creaks. Don't move. I'll come to you. Do I look like I'm going anywhere? My leg's broken. He shrugs. You could attempt to move him before this entire place caves in or get the hell out of here. Consider your options, then reveal card 46. So everyone in chat, you better be thinking. Last time, I forgot. We, we did one thing, and then we, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we did one thing, and then we did the other thing. Yes. Yeah. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reveal card 46. So think about what you might want to do while I'm revealing card 46, because we're going to make a decision. As I tried to always, yeah, okay, go ahead. Yeah. All right, so 46, crash or dash. You can flee. Or you can help. If you help, you're going to roll a D8. And uh, and when you roll that D8, there are potential repercussions if you fail. If you roll a 1, you're going to lose an ally. If you roll anything else, you're going to get the ooze-soaked so cloth. All right, we got a, we got a help in chat from uh, Morker20, who, who actually is a team member of ours. I'm going to out him on the chat here. That's, team, that's Thad. Everybody say hi to Thad. Hi, Thad. Hey, uh, Thad's Thad, uh, Thad's running our manuf the manufacturing part of our operation, so the actual boxes and arms and stuff of the Vorpal product. Um, uh, okay, so we're gonna try to help him. Who's rolling? Ben. Yeah, Ben, you can do it. All right, Ben. What do you, let's I'm, see what you got. I'm gonna roll. Okay. Oh, barely, barely. Ooh. You reach out a hand and manage to grab him by the tunic. It rips, and you're left with a chunk of it in your hand. You watch as the man falls out of sight. Uh, poor bastard. Then the rest of the floor collapses, and you slide down a slanted wall into darkness. You don't see him again. So you get the ooze-soaked cloth. Um, I'll keep it to remind myself that they are here. We can find them. This is cool, because this is just an item that you carry with you. You don't know what it might or might not be for, but now you have it. Yeah, and that's why it has the little book icon, because that's a, that's a story item instead of a combat item. Cool. All right, so... Um, you know, whoever wants it can grab it. And then we're going to card 47. 
I don't have four, card 47. Is that next chapter, Greg? Yeah, I'm afraid it is. It is. That's the end of the road for our heroes. Oh. <clears throat> and now we're going to have to tell you that we don't know what happens after this. I do. <laughs> uh, yeah, you do. Yeah, exactly. And now all the rest of us who backed your campaign, we're going to wait. I'm going to flip over uh, our heroes that we didn't use so people can take a look at those. Uh, so this is Rolf, uh, who's awesome because he has like a, a, a evil plant in his backpack, um, which is awesome, who helps him attack. And you can see the big jaws on that plant. And then Dane is the first hero I ever saw. Yeah. Um, because Dane, I think, was in the original set of art. And has nope. those boards tied to his arms with the with the spikes shooting out of him, which I think is pretty awesome. Um, this guy cool. was was definitely I think the first hero I ever saw, along with um, um, man, who was the other one? I think it was da the ones I saw was Dane and I want to say Hildegard. Now I might have been, um, what's her name? Malicent? What, what's what's her name? Well, that's the first thing it was the first thing that he did at all. Okay, cool. Uh, that, you know, it was um, a cool thing, cool thing with Dane. Like Ben, when he sent it to me, he gave me three um, tiers of spikes. <laughs> <laughs> so this is all the spikes. <laughs> so I, I told him I wanted. Uh, I was like, "Can you like beat him up? Like make, put slashes on his face?" And um, I want you know lots of spikes. So he gave me three iterations. Like there's a few spikes, and then there's kind of like middle and then there's heavy this was heavy this is all the spikes yeah, you're like you don't know who you're dealing with here ben i want all the damn spikes <laughs> yeah, yeah it, I, I love things on his face too when i put like two of the three on there that was fun hey ben what's yeah. your favorite which which card's your favorite card mine yeah i don't i don't know i, I kind of like them all in, in in a humble way i want to say <laughs> like, um uh, but yeah, but regarding like the, the spikes and stuff, I always like to like give people variations on what they want to do. So they have like this this little part of love customization that they can do to the artwork that they get. So I kind of try to include that as much as I can within the time frame I have. So there's always like, hey, do you want this on there? Do you do you want this item in there? And then little color variations and stuff. And I I hope it works out. Like I try to keep it like very sorted and, and customizable. Mm -hmm. and um I, sometimes i don't know how the final card will look you know like sometimes when i see the final card in the game here i'm like oh yeah this is the, the version he chose oh yeah oh, i remember one. that one yeah the uh the gray mar right yep. <sighs> let's pour out pour, pour one out for um, the gray, the gray she she is not in the game you guys oh uh, okay she's after got, she got we spent so much time on on her breast <laughs> it's true this one this one we spent you spent the most time on this one right than anyone it, it might be yeah we, we went a little, little back and forth especially like on the style like the very first version i, I did we kind of scrapped that because it was like too stylized and, and not in line with with the other stuff um but yeah she's i, I mean that she's out of the game i i basically learned recently like that <laughs> like i just i just do the pictures and then i i, I yeah i love her so much <laughs> but um yeah it was one of those things where um what actually happened was the only um because i full disclosure here the, the budget you know was before this all started this is fairly this is you know it's just me here you know so it wasn't you know not a, not a lot of bread for the game and uh I didn't, I couldn't pay to have anyone review the game even really. I mean, so, you know, I didn't, I didn't know this. I just didn't know that out there in the world to get your game reviewed, you need to pay like 300 bucks a pop to have these guys even look at it. And um, I got the, um, the guys from Meeple Mountain offered to do it for free. And it, they're just awesome. They were like, yeah, we want to review it. And I was like, this, this is great, you know? So I gave it to them. And they reviewed it and they were just, they were so nice. And um, their one negative thing, the, the guy who reviewed it there, he just said, yeah, the, you know, they got a mermaid in there. She's just really un interesting and she has big boobs. And, you know, it's like, he kind of knocked it for that. And it's totally fair, you know, it's fine. But I was like, you know, these guys were so nice and there's going to be other people. I actually got some hate on Instagram, like some women saying, you know, I'd like to play this game, but you, you know, why are you doing this? Blah, 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 blah. 
So it was kind of like the fourth hit on her, which I, I just had no idea. You know, like to me, it seemed so harmless, but um, it was kind of the final straw. And I just told the guy, I was like, look, you know, if you do the review, you know, maybe I'll just remove her from now. And then, you know, you guys can think about what you want to do as far as what you're going to say about it, you know, like what's the fair thing to do. And uh, I was just, you know, since I'm new and I don't know what I'm doing and I'm just trying to put it out there, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. So that's more or less what happened to her. Um, and yeah, so it's like, I really want that kind of thing in there, but you know, it's not for everybody. And, and like Ben was saying the whole time, he's like, you know, you got a really niche audience here. And I was thinking about the whole time. I was like, you know, I already have this really, really small pocket of people. If I toss out another 10%, you know, because, you know, all I did was throw in some kind of like, you know, just really kind of random explicit material that doesn't help the game at all, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think whatever in your, in your end product, you end up with something that more people can enjoy. Right. Which is like a yeah. creator, like your that's your target anyway. Right. So like my seven year old, she, she would always talk to me about that car, <laughs> 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 you know, I was like, you know, it's like, oh, okay, well, you know, We'll just leave it. We'll just leave that stuff out, and um, you know, I don't, I don't miss it now. So yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 you know, I don't think it it negatively impacts the product on offer, right? So like, I think that that choice makes sense to me. I'm just sad that the work was done, and she's, you know, I think she came out really good, but. So a yeah. question for you, Ben, like, is this, um, this was your first, this was your first sort of foray into doing board game or card game work. Um, is this something you're going to try to do more of? Like, did you enjoy it? Do you like doing this stuff? Or was this something that, you know, cause obviously like, I think a lot of people like, like your stuff for this medium. Right. So, um, would you consider doing it again? Um, I mean, if the opportunity knocks, you know, I, I will not say no. It's just like, this is the first time I'm doing something in this style for like a commercial product basically because nobody really asked me but i love doing this like i I have, I have like my personal comic book artists where i'm like hey those people are great i want to do something like that and uh, i never had the chance so i'm actually really happy that this is kind of the stuff that i get to do now and enjoy now and have fun doing it and most of the time greg is like super happy and sometimes we like you know have some kinks in the drawing and we gotta like figure out how to solve them and after that, people respond positively, and then I, I enjoy doing it, and I'm also like, you know, getting paid for doing that at the same time. So I'm kind of living the artist dream right now. <laughs> if that if that continues with the next project or something, I'm I'm happy about it. Cool, really cool. Yeah, I think um, you know, I I do think that people, uh, in the board game space, it's more and more happening where people do have followings for artists. Uh, so like a Beth Sobel. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people know her games and, and, and she has allied herself with like, you know, good publishers and strong games and, and people love her art. So, um, and I think like Quan Chai Moria is like another really popular board game artist. So like, I do think there's a lot of space there to, for artists to co- sort of build a niche inside the hobby. Um, mm-hmm. because like when you're going to look at a game for two hours, like you want it to look cool, you know, like, uh, you don't want it to look really boring and plain um so i think there's i think i think it it enhances the game a lot you know not to not to like downgrade the design or whatever right but like i think the fact that there's really cool looking cards that you're playing with here that that has a impact on you as a player so um you know i'd love to see you get more into this that's cool yeah it's just i mean what i was when people see it they always say how different it looks excuse me you know, and it's like, we were really going for that. And I just think that he really achieved something that, I mean, it's just like, you see this stuff and it doesn't look like other stuff, right. you know? I mean, there's really not, I mean, I'm, and I'm not trying to, I mean, it really, I don't see anything else that really looks like it Yep. in, in this space, you know? So, and I think that that's a real, it's an asset to the game. I mean, it, it does give it a totally different feel. It's got a really, you know, I'm certainly, you know, I, I'm thrilled with the look of it. Um, Do you guys know offhand, top of your head, roughly how many unique drawings are going to be in the final product? No, but he, but I would say he's more than halfway done. Okay. There's the only thing that's left is, um, I mean, not the only thing, but you know, it's like um, basically it's just this what, what I call a um, 
story illustration or storybook. Uh, that, that, that was my phrase with storybook was just the little, the pieces on the cards that tell the story now. I mean, cause we have um, all the bosses, but one done. Um, oh no, that's not true. We have, we have two encounters left to do. One kind of like the mushroom men where we got a bunch of little guys and, and, and a big guy, which he knows about. And then we have the mirror man is like the final guy, I think right now i had a whole nother thing set up but there was a lot more cards and i don't know it just kind of depends but yeah so we just have those little storybook illustrations that we put gonna put through and then dependent upon how many illustrations that i need what i'd let what i'd love to do is go back and like the little ferret you know on that one little card you know i would love to just add all kinds of stuff like that little teeny bits here and there all yep. over all the cards I and mean, that's what i'd really really like to do but it just it just depends on how this all goes, you know. People think that somehow I have seventy thousand dollars to work with, you know. <laughs> what are you gonna be like? You have seventy thousand dollars, and I'm like, guys, take half of that immediately and just throw it away. It's gone. <laughs> it's gone. You know, and then take another third of it, and it's taxes, and it's gone. You know, so it's like I, I feel like it's like I've got everything. We can just you know, illustrations everywhere. You know, but um, yeah, there's a lot of, um, you know, we'll see. Yeah, well, I mean, I think you guys so far have done a good job of constraining the scope, right? Like being very aggressive with saying we're not going to do crazy stuff. We're not going to get bogged down in all sorts of add-ons. We're not going to get bogged down in stretch goals because we want to be able to deliver. We want to be able to hit our timeline um, and not just disappear into the night like sometimes happens, right? Yeah. So. I, I think you're making the right decisions. Like, and from what I've seen so far, even with what the product looks like right now, if this was three more chapters of the same, and I think it even gets longer as we go. I don't know if I if, if you've told me that, yeah. Greg, or not. But chapter four is the big chapter. Okay. The 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 um, thing is, it's fifty. Uh, the average is sixteen cards a chapter because there's a hundred and twelve or whatever. So chapter four or yeah, chapter four has like a hundred and wait, not a hundred. It has twenty-two cards, I think. So, like the Mushroom Man chapter that has twelve cards. Right, Mushroom Man chapter was quick in terms of total cards. Yeah, it, it's small, and then there's a lot of things that happen in four. There's actually two encounters in four, for, and every other chapter only has one. And there's a trash mob in four. So that's like the big one. That's the one I'm working on now that's really intimidating. Cool. Because there's like a lot of stuff. And then the other, yeah, uh, not to go on forever, but this, this is fun for me. So <laughs> you're with me here. The other really cool thing that I would love to do, that's, that's another thing on the back burner, is um, more pull cards. Because I have this, you know, there's a mechanic in the game where you can pull a card, right? And mm -hmm. it doesn't change where you're at. So. Another thing I'd like to do, if we have the bandwidth to do it, is have some pull cards like during battle where it would, like if you hit a good hit, you'd get a pull card and it would show an illustration of that occurring. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And, you know, like if you got a good hit, you'd actually pull a card and you'd see that good hit, you know, just a fun kind of fluff card, you know? So I'm going to try to at least like stick one in there, you know? And so that we have, like, maybe at the end, like, if you get the final guy or do the final thing, like a good, whatever that best way to do it, you get an additional card and just get to see it, you know, kind of thing. So it's another wish list thing that I hope to do. And, and that's, um, I'll, I'll, I'll stop here in just a second. And that's why I kind of didn't want to do a lot of stretch goals, because as soon as you do the stretch goals, it kind of puts you in a box. And then you're stuck doing those things. And... I was like, you know, if we have enough room to move, to maneuver around here, you know, I could probably include some really cool stuff, but until I can figure out, you know, how chapter four, like kind of fits together and everything, you know, I don't want to promise one thing and then realize, oh, you know what, I really should have done this instead. This is going to be way better, you know, and it's like you, you lose those freedoms and I think I can make a better game by not doing all the stretch goals. So that's kind of why I didn't do it. I think that you makes know. sense to me, you know, mm -hmm. not having never delivered a board or designed a board game. But, you know, like I, I think if you don't have it all like buttoned down on the day you go to Kickstarter, 
I would much rather have you as a designer have the ability to kind of discover things as you go and make a better final product. Like, I think that makes sense to me personally, but as a, yeah. as a layman, as an observer. There's always the piece of me with, with Kickstarter, the way you have those stretch goals is they didn't hit them. What am I missing? Like, well, there's that too. You know, you, you build a game. It's, it's an amazing game. And like you stuck with it. And I like that. I think that's cool. <clears throat> Cool. So um, we're, we're going to probably close up shop here shortly, but if there are questions from the chat, kind of now or never, if you want to talk to Ben or Greg, um, or if you just want to find out what Steve's up to in his life, uh, you, can, you, can, you can ask that as well. Um, for, for people who are here for the first time, because we've had a lot of folks, uh, new names uh, tonight, if, um, if you're curious about us, um, a follow on, on Twitch, we, we stream like once a week uh with the team the dev team working through just features and new stuff that we're up to um and then if you're curious about more details of like what vorpal board does um and what it would let you do as a user you can check out vorpalboard.com that has like all the details um and then we have a mailing list there that's probably the best way to stay in contact with us but we're obviously on social media everywhere essentially so you can find us all over the internet um ben and greg are there other any other things you guys wanted to make sure folks knew tonight in terms of where to find you or any updates on on um, on the Kickstarter or any of that sort of stuff? I mean, I feel like I've said way too much, so I'll just like. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, where to find me is just you know in in the chat there. I can just do it again and just highlight me. And if you go on my profile, there's basically all the links to like DeviantArt and with us like a lot of like like ink drawings as well as the stuff I usually do, which kind of is, <laughs> funnily enough, the casual, it's everywhere, Hearthstone kind of, you know, colorful, stylized stuff. Is that stuff that I'm like Greg usually... badmouthed at the beginning of the Yeah, <laughs> it's the stuff I usually do. <laughs> um, great. I just didn't want it for this game. Uh, That's okay. No, no, I, I don't mind it because I also love doing this. You know, it's like both things really suit me well. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy we went for this because this looks unique. And this is, this is also, you know, I can show this to people. And I'm like, Hey, we did, we did something, um, on Kickstarter and people loved it. And that's a really good thing. Um, but yeah, on my, on my profile, there's like uh, art station, deviant art and, and all the, all the weird websites where you can have like galleries and stuff. And uh, yeah, otherwise it was fun being here. It was fun rolling for the enemy. <laughs> and uh, you gotta, you gotta fix your dice so it doesn't roll one. <laughs> yep, I'll, I'll, I'll put that on the list of uh, features that we need to work on. Um, but um, all right, so I wanna thank everybody for being here. Ben, for staying up until the middle of the night uh, in Germany. Hopefully your day tomorrow you isn't awful or your day today isn't awful. Um, and then um, thanks to Greg and thanks for Steve. Greg, I really appreciate um, you spending the day of your celebration uh here with us tonight instead of doing your family or whatever you want to do so so I, I certainly appreciate that and i could not be happier for you guys in the success of this project i've been very excited about it from the start um i remember the first time i the actual first time i played it i was on a plane uh and i played it on a seat back table uh by myself so um uh since that point i was i was very much looking forward to it and i'm just really happy to see how it ended up so congratulations of course, thank you. Uh, hey, this, this has been a blast. I always have so much fun on this thing. This is our third time doing it. It's 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 fantastic. It, you know, it's always a good time. Yeah. So um, yeah, it is kind of funny. I was I was talking to my wife today, and I was like, yeah, I'm playing uh, I'm playing with like my buddies Greg and Steve tonight, and she's like, oh, like uh, like who are they? And I'm like, well, <laughs> uh, it's these guys that I kind of met online, and then like I've played some board games with them. Uh, but like I met Steve once in like a, a, a cafe and then I've, I've only met Greg online, you know? So, so yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I think our goal obviously is to make it so it kind of feels like you played a board game together. And, and like, I have a weird memory now that like I played a board game with you guys, even though we didn't actually play a board game together in person, you know? So yeah, I totally, yeah, no, it, it works perfectly like that. Other than, yeah, Steve just won once and not being able to keep track of his hit points. Yeah, the freezing right. of the cubes. I'm, I'm going to look into the cube freezing. I do not know what's going on. I'm going to have to send you an email, Steve, to find out what's going on. It's that luck thing. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, and then thanks for everybody in chat. Um, you know, hopefully I'll see you all again soon. And, um, and for folks, uh, you guys, we're going to sign off, but then we can just stay in the session and, and chat for a second. Um, sure, otherwise, sure. We'll, um, I'll be back on Tuesday night probably with the team. I'm not sure what we're going to be playing. 
uh, this week, but uh, we're always playing something different. So um, see y'all next time and have a good rest of your weekend. Good night. Night.